to the 2024 Sheffield Varsity Ice Hockey Championship. It's set to be a really exciting night of sport. I'm Amelia Rhodes, your presenter for this evening. I'm joined by Lloyd and Seb, our pundits. So guys, how are you feeling this evening? Well, I'm feeling very excited. I think having the ice hockey as the opener sets uh, a great occasion for both universities. It's going to be absolutely immense and give them from what we saw last year, I think we're in for a great spectacle this evening. Yeah, so I'm, I'm all there with your excitement. I think everyone in the arena is starting to fill up now. You can start to really feel the buzz. People getting their last drinks in, stands are starting to fill up. Ice hockey is always one of those games that promises so much drama, so much fun, especially after last year. Anything can happen. I'm really, really excited to see how it plays out. Yeah, and Seb, you mentioned that this year it's changed how it, how it normally runs. The ice hockey is opening the competition. How do you think that's going to change the way the players play tonight? Well, firstly, I do think it's a really good move, creating a little bit more of an excitement around uh, the start of Varsity. We've not really seen that in previous years. But secondly, um, I think it, it's it's great. You know, ice hockey deserves to be right at the start of, of the event. You know, to see the biggest uh, attended ice hockey college match outside of North America. So it's great to see that right at the start of the Varsity calendar. And as you mentioned again, you know, after last year, I think it's, it's unable to call who might come on top of this one. But we're in for definitely lots of excitement and I'm, I'm glad to see it right from the start. Yeah, and I think the, um, the fact that he's going first will really play on the pressure on these players. Of course, lots of players, especially in the Hallam team, making their varsity debuts. This is probably the biggest crowd they've ever played for, already a very high pressure situation. But the fact is that Varsity hasn't been decided yet. Obviously, last year, uh, Uniov had already won. Pressure was off them, really. They didn't need to win. However, now all points are up for grabs. They'll be desperate to get the win. Even more pressure. Yeah, so obviously, we mentioned that the Uni of Sheffield won for the first time since the competition began in 2005. So, how do you think that's going to change the way they go into this game, considering they've got a win under their belt? What are your thoughts on it? Well, you, you would think. You know, they're going to come into it with a bit more confidence. However, for me, any time whenever I played sports, I like to go in as the underdog. I always felt that bit less pressure when I had the expectation of winning. Obviously, that might show, especially in the early stage of the game, these players are going to be coming out to especially a junior crowd, which after last year are expecting a win. After so many years of not winning, you know, they've got a chance now, and it may create even more pressure on the players' minds. And in terms of a Hallam point of view as well, last year was the first time that they've ever lost the varsity ice hockey match. So they've won 17 and lost uh, one uh, from the 18 so far. So they'll absolutely be coming to this one uh, wanting to get revenge on the result last year. So yeah, I think we're through a great evening of entertainment and live sport. So heading into the match, Seb, what are your stand-up players from the Hallam side? Yeah, well myself, I think I'll have to pick out Nick Winters, who was the Hallam netminder. You know, we saw last season, uh, last year, in fact, last year's varsity, the impact of netminders. You know, Yuki Higuchi for University of Sheffield uh, was remarkable in that penalty shootout. You know, uh, great for the university side. Uh, Nick Winters will be incredibly important for Hallam. He actually plays for Sheffield Steel Dogs and has previously been on the bench for the Steelers. So he'll be uh, definitely important for Hallam. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean he, as, you, as you said, Winters has you know appeared in the squad for the Steelers. They've just won the Challenge Cup the other week. Yeah, a really impressive feat for him. For me, I think both teams are really bolstering strong squads. Uh, from, I'm going to be keeping my eye on Sam Parkin, uh, the forward for Uniob. He made his Varty debut last year, got on the score sheet. Uh, really impressive going forward. I thought he was Uniob's biggest threat. He's followed that up with a really strong season. Uh, Ten goals for the Sheffield Bears, seven goals for the Sheffield Titans. I think if there's uh, a big threat for Uniob, it's definitely going to be him. And you mentioned the Sheffield Bears. There's a little bit of a different element to this match tonight because obviously they normally play in a, in a team together. So how do you think that's going to impact the way that they play playing well, against each other? Yeah, I think it will be a little bit odd, you know, going from playing to someone for su such a long time in, in the years that the, the players tonight have done. And, and tonight they're going to be playing against each other. So he's almost sort of playing against the usual teammates. So that will certainly be different and certainly a challenge uh, uh, teams, uh, players from either side will have to uh, sort of uh, think of, of a solution to that. So the mindset change definitely within that. Mm. And obviously teammates, they're all going to know the ins and outs of each other. All, every player is going to know each other player's weakness, 
Can they exploit it? We'll see. However, one thing I am for sure, there will not be that team camaraderie between them all. It's a fierce rivalry between Union and Sheffield, to say the least. I think we're going to see out there, it'll be scrappy to begin with, especially last year. Hamlin came out all guns blazing. Some aggressive squad, conceded a lot of penalties. I think, you know, I don't expect to see any uh, any love lost. It'll be, it'll be sharp, it'll be aggressive. You know, I, we, we know their teammates. Watching it out there, you won't even tell. Well, I think it'd be quite tense, really, you know, sort of each side uh, sit, settling down, seeing how um, their opposition will fare. Uh, but I think there will be periods of sort of excitement and, and attacking um, opportunities for, for both sides, really, in this match. But the first sort of uh, period of the game, I think, might be a little bit uh, uh, a bit slower pace, perhaps, than what we might see in, in the last uh, third. But. Um, yeah, I think it's generally pretty quiet, but there will be the, the, the opportunities for, for both sides. Um, you know, we saw that it just takes one opportunity for, for a goal to be scored, and if Ivory University can, can clinch that goal from, from an early stage, they'll be looking to build on other momentum from that goal. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. I think it's going to be a very GKG affair to, to begin with, in front of such a big audience, such a rowdy audience as well. A lot of players are going to be feeling nervous. Um, you're going to be looking towards the more experienced, the more skillful players, sort of calm the teams down. However, ice hockey, such an unpredictable game. We saw only two years ago, Uniov were leading 1-0 up until the final period, ended up losing game 4-1. It's a game that can change so quickly. I wouldn't expect all periods to be the same. I think especially uh, one thing noting is that Hallam have a much larger side. 20 players to Uni of 16. Especially going into that final period, they're going to have fresher legs. Uni of are going to tire, especially with an older and more experienced squad. I do the Hallam maybe looking the sharper as the game goes on. You mentioned that about uh, Hallam's squad. They're, they're a very young side. The average age of about 22. University of Sheffield average age about 24. So there's not much difference in it, but in terms of the, the players within the, the Hallam ranks, there are lots of 19, 18 year olds, so a lot of first timers as well, a lot of youth within that squad. So you might take them just a little bit of time to settle down, get into the rhythm of the game, and then hopefully they can, they can pick on and, and score some goals and ultimately win the game. Yeah, well, as you can see behind us, the crowds are filling up. It's going to be such an exciting time. Can you guys just describe the atmosphere for me? Obviously, there's so much screaming going on. Everyone is super excited. I'm sure you don't need me to describe that sound. You can already hear it. it last year, it was a raucous crowd. I expect nothing different this year. I think, you know, once those stands get filled, chants, signs, it will be such a great atmosphere that I'm really looking forward to. Absolutely. Myself and Lloyd were uh, just nicked for a little toilet break before we went live and we saw people running to the, uh, the bar so there'll be plenty of uh, lively events I'm sure within the, uh, the crowd in the uh, Utilta arena. Lots of excitement and lots of drama and I'm sure the, the fans will be absolutely loving it. Me and Lloyd were fortunate enough to be here last year and what drama, what events unfolded that night and I'm sure we're in for the same again. And just before we hand over to the commentary team, any score predictions? I think, I think Callum have the advantage, they've got, a, I'd say, a more skillful squad and they've got a larger squad. For me, I think they'll just about edge it. I'll go 2-0. Yeah, I have to agree. I think University of Sheffield, although they did win last year's, I think this year it's going to be Hallam. So uh, I'll go 3-0 Hallam. Right, guys, thank you so much for giving me your thoughts. We're going to hand over to the commentary team, Dennis and Ollie, for the first period. We are here live at the Sheffield Arena. The atmosphere is really building, as you've heard. And of course, we've got Hallam, we've got the University of Sheffield, we've got the sort of two thirds of the arena in the black and gold of the University of Sheffield. And it's building. We'll have the uh, opening ceremony coming to you in just a couple of minutes' time. It is, of course, the first time ever uh, that the opening ceremony is being held here. Um, because previously we've had the ice hockey as the closer to the event. Um, Dennis, how do you think it's going to pan out this opening ceremony? I, I think we can expect a very defensive game from Uni of today. Obviously, uh, mentioned in the punditry before, they've got a much smaller squad than Hallam do, and I think it will be a lot of Hallam today. 
you yeah. will do well to do two in a row. Yeah, well, look, it, it's a whole lines difference. It's 20 players for uh, Hallam, for 14 for the University of Sheffield, and a lot more experience as well. And it's you know you've got to think about the fact that actually everyone's going to be out on the ice for probably about a third extra than they probably would want to be. I mean, that's a huge difference in a game like this. Um, you know, both of us we've played foot, so and it's very different. It's rolling substitutions. You're on for a couple minutes at best generally and the difference between being on for three minutes versus two minutes is so different it's so frenetic I, I just there's going to be a lot it's going to be a lot of hard work for uni today and it will be very impressive if they can get that second one in a row obviously last year was their first in 18 years and first of all of varsity ice hockey Hallam have won every single one before that and yeah. it will be very very impressive if they can do yeah, so look, again it was a bit of a smash and grab i think it's fair to say last year um uni were Outshot 70 to 21. Obviously, Yuki Higuchi with an unbelievable uh, performance in, in net. Yeah, um, 68 saves is quite something. Honestly, absolutely unbelievable. He's not here uh, this year. Steventon's coming in and he's trying to make his mark. But look, it was Higuchi's first ever varsity last year. And we know players can come up, they can play in front of this incredible 8,000 strong crowd, and they can do the bits. Do, do you think that maybe Uni should try something less defensive this year? Well, I think the difference between the sides is probably so big that they almost have to do it. Um, it's, look, um, and you may have just noticed, I'm sure you have, it's a blackout here, and that means the opening ceremony for Sheffield Varsity 2024 is about to begin. On the Jumbotron, we're currently being shown some clips of Varsity's past and indeed present. Um, it's going to be a huge one, and live on Forge TV, we're going to be bringing you all the greatest action going to be bringing you boxing, we're going to be bringing you rugby live from Hallam Sports Park, but here we are for the very first time opening at the Sheffield Arena. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about the Sheffield Arena being the opening event? Obviously ice hockey as a finisher is always an absolute classic here at Sheffield and I think that it's nice to have something new. I think it's nice to get these people down. You know, it's a really big event for both unis. Hallam will be looking to stop that 10th in a row against uni, whereas uni will be looking to kick on and get that 10th overall varsity win straight in the bag, and they would like to do it with another varsity ice hockey win. Yeah, look, this is it. it they have really hurt them last year. Um, generally, what we've seen over the past 10 years or so is University of Sheffield win varsity total. Um, but actually the big events go towards Hallam, the ice hockey, the boxing and the football and actually uni have won all of them last year. Um, and as a university I'm sure Hallam will be trying to change things and you are currently seeing some excellent graphics that have been created. It's showing you the difference in wins between the sides here at Sheffield Varsity. 2024 is the uh, We've got the 2023 highs, that's Lawson Glasby scoring here at the Sheffield Arena almost a year ago to the day, an unbelievable game, and as has been mentioned, it was the first time Uni ever won this event, um, winning in penalties, and this is a bit of the taste of the action that we're going to see today. It's not just any university event, this is Sheffield Varsity, and this is the ice hockey. Sheffield is the ice hockey city of the country, and so many of these guys, it means so much to them, because actually, they play for professional sides, they play in the national division, the elite league even, we've seen with the goalkeeper Nick Winters for Hallam, um, this is the big one. There's Yuki Higuchi's save last year. Absolutely amazing events at the Sheffield Arena. Um, I was here on Punditry and I can tell you it's one of the probably biggest moments in university uh, sport ever. I mean, it, it, 18 years, it never happened before. I don't know about you, but I mean, what a moment that was. I was here last year and it was so tense. They, Uni wanted it so badly and it was brilliant to be able to see the first ever one. As you see there, 15 to 1, Uni got it last year and I think it is almost time nearly to meet our teams. They'll be coming out on the ice very soon. It'll be Hallam first before Sheffield. You'll get to meet all of the players before the captains and our wonderful sports officers who do so much for sport in Sheffield and university sport all around the country. Yeah, the pictures you're seeing now are just a taste of what you're going to see a little bit later. But first of all, we do have a little bit of an opening ceremony here at the Sheffield Arena. The flag bearers are out and it's still dark. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea of what's going on here. We're going to have all the varsity teams uh, coming out onto the ice um, in a big opening ceremony. But look, this is an incredible... This is Yuki Higuchi all over. He was wonderful. That was the one time, actually... Oh, 
How do you think? How do you think that the players will be feeling right now? Oh, they'll they be in the tunnel. This noise in here, you can hear it over the video home. Oh, there's nothing like it. A big game like this, you just live for these moments as a player. Um, you know, these guys, for most of them, this will be the biggest crowd they ever play in front of. I mean, obviously it's exciting, but also you've got to be nervous. That cheer you can hear is just, we're seeing the visuals that you can see here in the arena as well. Um, everyone's so excited because it happens once a year for many people in the crowd. They've never seen an event quite like this. Th this, let may, alone you this may be some people's first ever ice hockey game. This is the chance to show them what it's all about. And this, I mean, this will be the biggest game most of these players will ever play in yeah. front of. This will be the biggest crowd. It's yeah. so, so important for yeah. both universities. But for the people at home, if this is your first ever ice hockey game you're watching, we hope we'll help you through a little bit understanding the rules, the trials and tribulations of one of the best sports in the world, in my unbiased opinion. And you're seeing the officiating team coming out here. We've got Andrew Miller, Scott Ellis, Tom Horner and Paul Staniforth. They're your officiating team today. Um, and actually, Dennis, we saw an interesting refereeing performance a year ago, something we don't often see. Yeah, they did so well. Um, I think that they will be looking to play a very open game. I don't think they'll want to call many fouls. Last year, there was maybe 10 penalty minutes in total. But it is finally time to meet your players. Up first, it is Nick Winters in goal. And the second player on the pitch is number 51, the backup netminder. OK, we've got Holly Neenan. We've got Nathan Bennett here for Sheffield Hallam. They're all coming out onto the ice. Next up is Lewis Miles. We've got Pun Fasuki Watano. What a name. He was brilliant last varsity as well. Really helped contribute to that attacking unit of Hallam. Another varsity hero from last year, Ryan Fraley, stepping out onto the ice. And now Adam Broughton coming on as well. I mean, what a moment to be stepping out in front of these guys. Nathan Otley, another 2023 varsity player. Uh, before on comes Josh Humphreys. Coming up next onto the ice, we have got Joel Marsh, a lovely defenseman on here today. And we've also got Luke Reed, who is an absolute unit on the ice for Hallam. So, so important in their defense. Neil Orr, another defenseman, uh, sorry, a forward. Uh, he is uh, actually an SNC coach for the Sheffield Steelers professional team that play here. Here is uh, Eden Hare, formerly of the Milton Keynes Thunder in the NIHL First Division. And now the captain, Danny Hage from Germany. James White coming on. He plays for the Sheffield Titans. We've got one of your alternate captains. We've got Ben Crowther. He played last varsity. He's had a very impressive season this year and we'll be looking forward to his performance in defence. Followed by Oliver Keeling coming on as well. He uh, played in varsity last year and he got the secondary assist in last year's varsity for Hallam. Thomas Dermott also captain. coming onto the ice. He is the captain of Sheffield Hallam. And there's your team and you can hear the boos from two thirds of this arena. But up next will be the players in black and gold of the University of Sheffield. Hallam doing their first little lap of honor to start off here. Cheers of Yune, Yune in front of us. And that is, of course, what's coming up next with the Sport Sheffield, University of Sheffield logo live on the Jumbotron. For these Hallam now players. Oh, here we go. Let's welcome your team in black and gold. Let's hear it. First up is Callum Steventon, the netminder. He joined the Sheffield Bears almost 10 years ago in 2015, and he'll be looking to replicate Higuchi. Now Jaden Davies, number 33. He is a treasurer of the club, he's studying engineering. Chloe Carter, number two. Yeah, Chloe Carter, obviously Varsity is mixed this year, something that may not be common in all of the Varsity sports, but it is a mixed team. And there is Isabel Wright as well, followed by Joseph Faulkner. Up next, Geoffrey Hargreaves, formerly of the uh, Peterborough Phantoms youth team. He's got seven games for the B team this year. 
Now, Will Shalossi, interestingly, his first varsity for the ones. He's the son of head coach and player Michael Shalossi, who is named now at number 27. It's his 17th varsity, and he played in all of the losses, as, of course, the uni won the first time last year. Edward Nendig now coming on. This is his first varsity one. He's to play for Haringey Hounds in the youth. And up next, coming onto the ice, we've got Radu Nikolai. Now, this boy, he is special. He scored the winner in last year's varsity, and he is also the alternate captain. Yeah, here is Adam Brooks-Smith, and now Sam Parkin, who scored a late equaliser to force overtime last year. He's got 10 goals and 14 assists in nine games. And finally, captain Lawson Glasby, part of the Glasby brothers. He is a Sutton stick. for your two sides coming out onto the ice here at the Sheffield Arena. I mean, you can hear the atmosphere. The tension will be building for the players, but it's just excitement. There are a few beers already in the fans here. Um, I mean, what? It, it's just such a special event. I mean, I know we keep talking about it, but where else do you get this in the world for a uni event? Um, you know, Sheffield is such a city of ice hockey. And here we have the players um, lining up next to each other. Um, and we'll have the national anthem coming up fairly shortly, I'm sure. I you can see the red carpet being brought out here for the opening ceremony, which is being held on the ice. You'll have the teams coming out in a few short moments well hopefully not too short because I'm sure you guys were excited for the game to start as I am and of course Dennis here with me as well it's an interesting atmosphere here um, everyone's just filled with tension Something's going on, I can tell you that for certain. Here come the captains coming out with the respective university sports officers. the flag bearers the captains of the sides coming out in their pairs we've got basketball going out there I can recognize not the most exciting of uh, opening ceremonies here I think it's fair to say but a special moment for each of the captains to walk out on the hallowed ice. Okay, we'll probably leave you uh, for a few short moments with the pictures um, of the opening ceremony here at the Sheffield Arena. The big event will be starting at quarter past, we're told, so it should just be a couple of minutes.
go. The captains and the sports officers are here on the ice. And now we're going to have the national anthem. And as you saw, the players opposite each other, I'm sure it would have been a strange moment for them. Most of the year, they're friends, they play together for the Sheffield Bears, as the pundits briefly mentioned. The two unis are together, generally throughout the year, playing underneath one banner. Um, but how strange do you think it is to be playing against players for the first time? I don't think there'll be any love lost between the two teams. This is a very, very competitive game and I think that everybody is going to be absolutely up for it. If anything, it gives you a slight tactical edge that you're so familiar with each other and you may be able to come up with small little tactics that you can help. Maybe you go really aggressive, maybe you sit off a little bit, but it will definitely help knowing each other more than if it was a complete unknown. Yeah, absolutely. And in the sport of ice hockey, you need to really go for it at the start in terms of physicality. Especially in a big game like this, you need to show the other team that you are the team that's going to be the, the most dominant. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's called a four check in ice hockey and you need to be strong on it. You can't really sit off. And that's going to be a huge ask for this uni team. They're so much smaller than the Halland team. They will wear out quickly. But it's important that they don't just let them walk all over them. Absolutely. And I think we saw quite a lot in the first period in 2023. A couple of scraps here and there, no proper fights. That hasn't happened until uh, since I think about 2013 here in Varsity Ones. However, we might see some scrapping um, in the goals um, and during the breaks in play. And as the teams go towards the benches, that means only one thing. We are minutes away from the start of Sheffield Varsity 2024. And for the first time, as we say, it starts with the big showpiece event. Uh, we'll be here until around this time next month where we'll close out at the Cannon Medical Arena. But Hallam are pretty much ready on the ice. Uni are taking a bit longer to get there. Is this mental games from Uni of waiting longer, making Hallam stand there? Maybe. If you make them come out, and you have to make them stand on the ice, they're going to be waiting for you. What are they going to expect? Make them sweat just that little bit more. Yeah, I Sheffield, think... Sheffield University's tactics, we yeah. don't know. They, they might go more attacking than they did last year. It was something maybe that they could change up with, but we'll have to see. Yeah, this is it. This is the only time that these teams play as these unis all year. So we don't know how they're going to play. We don't know how the players are going to work together in these sides. And, right. you know, we don't know what the tactics are going to be. We don't know what Michael Shalossi is going to do uh, with his team today. But here we go. The puck drops. And with that, so begins the Sheffield Varsity 2024. And you'll be coming along with us for the journey live on Forge TV as Hallam have some early possession of the puck here. And already into University Zone. But they deal with that fairly well. As we see very early on, Uni of being pushed back on. Yeah, they'll be looking to keep the puck in their uh, offensive zone and uh, not let it drop too back. If you have Sheffield Uni having any sort of early sniff, it will give them that confidence, especially with the smaller squad. Absolutely. Now, but early on, they're actually really going for it, Uni of. Hallam have done well to keep the ball there, uh, to keep the puck there, um, to get round that high press. Cleared up by Lawson Glasby at the back. But now here come Hallam again around the boards. Good check into the boards. 
the crowd like that one from Lawson Glasby, and he does it again. This is exactly All what we're talking about. Oh, and there's a chance, but it's a misplaced pass. The crowd are really getting into this one. We're seeing some early big hits on the boards, but Uniov win the puck, and they might look to go through neutral zone here. But neither side really managing to keep possession of the puck early on. That's a big hit on the sidelines, and she's taken. Now here comes Sam Parkin, what can he do with it? That's, That's a, a good really tip good away. Check there. Joel Marsh sweeping up there for Hallam. Using the boards, but to no avail. It doesn't really seem like Junior have too much of uh, an attacking formation. Maybe they weren't expecting to have these opportunities early on. The puck is cleared and it's taken by Joel Bond. What can Hallam do here? Driving through the centre of the pitch. An early shot on goal, but I don't think uh, Stevenson will be too worried about that if it continues uh, all night to a shot like that. Across the boards, but that's Radu Nikolai there with the puck. Yeah, Radu Back Nikolai, one of the 2023 heroes. What can Otley do here is for the shot, that's the first shot of the game. And oh, there is a goal for Hallam. We thought it might be a good start. Tipped in by Joel Marsh. He was sniffing around the area there and he got there first. Stevenson couldn't keep it out. He'll be disappointed with that one. He had the opportunity to freeze the puck and he couldn't. And he looks on as there are excited scenes here. That is tenacity from the defenceman there. He's had two goals in last year's twos varsity in an 8-4 win. And he's got three goals and two assists on the season already. That's huge. That's a huge start for Hallam. Yeah, well, that's exactly what you want to come into a game like this doing, making it clear that you are the team that's going to win this early on. They were, a bit, they were rocked by some really good uni opportunities last year. And as you can see, maybe Steventon will be disappointed. But, you know, Marsh does really well. You've got to be there to score a goal like that, and he's done it very well. And that is now 1-0 to Sheffield Hallam. Could, could Steventon have gone better there? Really good play through neutral ice. But only two there, only two going up. Uni may be trying to conserve energy already. Ishbel Wright pressing from the front. Hallam can't quite get that away. Here comes Glasby. Oh, it unlucky. Just got away with it. I think it might have been an offside one there, but not caught by the officials. Here does go Glasby behind. There's an opportunity right. here at the back post. It just did not fall. Recycle behind. Open shot. Oh, what a save. Cleared up. No, not in. Bit of pinball there. A really good opportunity for Uni to hit back immediately. Recycle and Hallam have open ice, but they've not used it. And they lose the zone and they're forced to recycle a little bit there. But very promising for Uni here. Joel Bark trying to be a bit of a nuisance there. Hallam struggling really to get out of their zone recently. A good poke check there from his Hallam right. breaking. Here but Uni have got men back. What can they do? James White driving with the puck there, and he's recycled it Falls to Ryan to Fraley. Point. Shot on goal, initially blocked. Fraley's got a bit lucky there. Couldn't quite make his way through. James White chasing it down in that corner. Round the boards. Into Reed. Not quite the pass there for Uni. No, it's all a bit scrappy to start off with. We've seen some big opportunities, but they haven't really come from moments of excellence. They've come from just really getting a bit of luck in, in some situations. Oh, that's wonderful play there. Parking through to Carter. She's not quite got it. Yeah, look, it's only one player going on the press there. Again, how them struggling to keep possession. Yeah, it, 
it, it's been really scrappy through uh, neutral ice, I think, today so far. We're five minutes into Sheffield Varsity 2024. And if you're just. Oh, and it's sipped in front. That's lovely. Oh! Lucky with the redirect there. You've got to be there to stop it. Here goes Parkin. There's a puck battle in the corner for Parkin. And he's not quite got it for Uni. And it's played out to Luke Reed on the right hand side. Now here comes Oliver Keeling. Can he find the back post? That's a good save by Stevenson. Recycle. And cleared up by Uni. It was Risa Banyak at the back door there, trying to force it in from Norkwood Angle. But here we go, the first icing call of the night, which gives us a bit of an opportunity to let you know if you're just joining us. It is 1-0 to Sheffield Hallam University. Um, they scored a good early goal through Marsh. Uni of Sheffield have had a few chances, and we're seeing one of them here. A really good blocker save. Based off one by Uni, yeah, but well there's a call there. on the ice. The face-off wasn't done correctly. We'll redo it here. This needs to be a big win from Uni if they want to get it out of the zone. Glasby with do the it puck again. now. That could be really important. Oh, well done by Glasby. Of, uh, He's passed. Can he drive with it now? It's wonderful from, uh, from Sam Parkin. Forward they come. But again, the pass just isn't quite there. Joel Marsh forward, score of the goal already. And it's cleared up in it's front of goal. Of nice little touch it's a good hit with the skate. The Strong shot and a save by Stevenson again. Here come Uni, can they make the most of it? No, that's a save up in the Ooh, air. And a nice little hand pass away. Heart in mouth moment for Hallam there. Buck is stuck on the side of the pitch before being played back into the Hallam defensive zone. Yeah, the two sides are switching round. Hallam will be able to do that more than Uni will. Well, that's really good. there with a great bit of skill going through. Still, Poon goes. Oh, but again, he can't find the pass. Poon for Sukiwatana. There's someone we talked about pre game. But here come the University of Sheffield. Yes! 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 The what University of Sheffield! <laughs> it didn't take long. But the University of Sheffield have arrived to the party here. Is that Shalossi? His first varsity? No, it's Sam Parkin again. He scored last varsity and here he is popping up for the University when it matters. That is huge. He really is a black and gold hero. And that's another excellent goal. Just slipping through the goalkeeper's pads there. And we're back tight. It's one apiece. Last year, Sam Parkin scored the goal with three minutes left to take it to the overtime that eventually won it for University. And he's come up big again here. Oh, what a player Sam Parkin is. He currently plays in the NIHL second division with the Sheffield Titans. 12 points in just seven games this year. Puck deep in the uni zone. What can Hallam do with it? Just past the goal. Back around the boards. Ben Crowther, the assistant, sends it into Gretzky's office here. The wraparound effort. It's oh, in! It's in! It's a goal! Wow! From Ryan Fraley! Well, where did that come from? It's a fantastic wraparound effort from Ryan Fraley. And just as soon as the University of Sheffield think they're back in it, it goes underneath the blockers of the goalie. Stevenson, does he need to be stronger there? Yeah, you know, we see it a lot of the time. It's called a butterfly. The goalkeeper just drops to the ground, tries to stop anything from going underneath them, but just couldn't quite do it there. It wasn't quick enough. I mean, Ryan Fraley, he's taken the initiative there. Uni is sleeping, yeah, and, it, and he's, he's well up. Good value for the goal. Look, take nothing away from the finish. He's done very well there to come from behind the goal and see that opportunity. Uni in front with a good block there. Cleared up and chip, but they're going to chase that deep into the Hallam area. Nathan Bennett behind the goal, playing it forward. Oh, it's stolen away. Oh, nearly through. 
too there. much space James for James White. White. Almost in the crease there and no one around him. Ryan Fraley again just past the goal. Not a bad effort there. Still with Hallam, Ben Crowther. Danny Hayde in the corner. Can Uni get it off him? Captain with some hustle there. James White again. But Uni off. They've actually won a lot of these. Uh, these loose pucks. Just an ambitious ball forward. We're going to have Second a nice call game. again. Well, uh, that's not how you do it once you've scored the University of Sheffield. They'll be disappointed. You know, they've been on cloud nine, but they've been brought right back down to earth there. Well, they say the most dangerous time is just after you've scored yourself, and that proved to be the case here for University. But it's time to face off in their zone. Can they keep it out? It's going to need to be a big win. Back round the boards. Oliver Keeling with the puck. He tries to get in front, can't make it. Uni really tight there in front of the goal. That's a big hit in the corner. Again by first goal scorer Luke Reed. Keeling recycles it. Good work from Uni Hallam. to make Hallam lose the zone. And another hopeful puck forward. It's a great hit to the chance for Hallam here. Stevenson oh, needs oh, to get Stevenson on top of it. Should be oh no! Goal. All the way in, Oliver Keeling! Sweeping up again, disastrous for University. Stevenson not having a good game right now. Oh, you've got to do better. You've got to do better there. It has to be said. But Keeling has his goal. A little bit of afters there from Adam Brooks Smith. He'll be furious. It's, they've just thrown a couple of goals away, almost literally, really. The University of Sheffield, and just as it looked like they might be coming into the game. Is that, a, is that a mix up there between Glasby and Stevenson? It looks like he just takes it away from him well, when why, he's about to be covering. Why is he trying to take the puck away there in that position? You've got to ask the question. You've got to trust your goalie. The alarm bells will be ringing for the University of Sheffield. This, you know, this is, this is basics, really, in such a big game that you're messing up. It looks so promising for those in black and gold with the equaliser. But already, they're in a two-goal hold and there's a lot to do now. Well, we are now... Oh, really good. What can they Come do with it? Glasby, just wide. Glasby doing well there. Hallam on the breakaway. Can they find the pass? Save and smothered by well Stevenson. Oh, a little bit of afters there behind the goal, which you can't see at the moment. It is just two players, and it is sorted out very quickly by the officials. Yeah, we're uh, 11, uh, sorry, 10 minutes and 24 seconds into the first period. The periods are 20 minutes long, um, and the score is currently three goals to Hallam and one to the University of Sheffield. You have a face-off deep in uni of territory which uni win again i think that's three out of three one today yeah uni have been really good on the face off but they need to be so much better defensively elsewhere sam parking with the puck can they find the net no they can't and it's been dislodged and that will be a pause of play yeah it wasn't intentional from the netminder there but it was dislodged which means we'll have to stop put it back well Ollie, what do you make of it so far? Well, I think we're seeing actually Hallam have really gone for it to start off with. Um, but I think Uni have probably tried to be a little bit higher than we expected and maybe it isn't really working out for them. And, you know, they probably won't be able to keep this up uh, going into the second or third period, being so short benched. So it could be a really important final nine minutes of the first period. Just why? Shot dumped on goal there, but that was... Uh, Still in the zone, Sam easy. Parkin with it now. In front of goal, but intercepted. Here come Hallam. Well Holly Hallam. Neenan on the pitch right now. What can she do? Holly Neenan, a referee, has refereed in the Women's World Championships and in the Elite Ice Hockey League, the top division of UK ice hockey. And she is here playing on the ice uh, today, swapping colours from the white and black stripes for the white and maroon uh, of Hallam. 
One of the biggest cheers of the night as one of the Uni of players slip over on the ice. That's what the ice is there for. It's supposed to be slippery. Adam Brooks-Smith with a quick little tumble there. Got good cheers from all these wonderful supporters. Oh, well, we've got a penalty here. Nathan Bennett being sent into the box. And that means the University of Sheffield will be on the power play for two minutes. Now, the this is going to be so vital for Uni at the moment. They need to make advantage, really tire these opposition players out here. And if they can get a goal, they'll be right back in it. Yeah, it looked like it was a tripping call there. So two minutes of four on three action here for the University of Sheffield. And that, that penalty is against Nathan Bennett. Yeah, that's correct. That's a tripping call. In front of net. Oh, that's a good double save there. And they lose the zone. How long will be happy with that? Every small win during the two minutes when you're short-handed is huge. Um, you know, for uni, they'll want to be making the most of these two minutes with as many shots on goal as possible. As Lawson Glasby brings the puck forward and they move through neutral ice. Maybe another penalty could have been given there for tripping um, as he stuck the, uh, the poop out. Hallam immediately looking to clear it. For those unaware, the call of icing is when the puck is sent all the way from your own zone, all the way through to the backboards. But when you're short-handed, it doesn't matter. And that's why that wasn't given as icing for Sheffield and Hallam University there. But they're doing well. They're keeping Uni in their own zone and just winding the clock down as there's uh, one more minute left of power play for the University of Sheffield. Shot and just shot behind redirect that. just wide. Got got a goal well, again. real chance here. But that is frozen by the netminder. Oh, and there's and a little bit of afters after. there. What's going on? Need to keep the clear heads for this, especially, especially if you're uni. uni. Especially Absolutely. if you're uni. You can't, you can't afford to give up the power play now Great and get your own person. Great opportunity. But it's, it's held very, very well by the netminder for Sheffield Hallam. Yeah, Nick Winters has been impressive today. Made a good couple of saves so far. A real superstar around these parts. And this time Hallam win the uh, face-off. And away comes Josh Humphreys with it as he sends it. And just ooh, an opportunity for Hallam with the shot. That's a shot and goal. Good save good. by Stevenson. Forward come the University of Sheffield again, but they've given it away. And you, you can't do that. 20 seconds left on the power play. And they've not really had too many opportunities. A hopeful one there, but a good pad save, a blocker William save. Shalossi passing behind the goal there. Can he get a shot away? No. Still Shalossi in front of the goal. And a good glove by Nick Winters again. Frozen again, who does very oh, well, Nick Oh, big afters here. Big shove in the back. What was that? Nathan Otley, I think. Shalossi just uh, taking the role of standing by the crease, hoping that the puck manages to make its way to him. It was pushed by Otley there. And a really good catch for Nick Winters. In a game like this, you need to be really, really happy with what's behind you as a defence. And I think with Nick Winters, you'll always be pretty confident that he'll do the business. And the redirect there goes wide. And now the Sheffield Hallam University side are back to full strength. A really good penalty kill there. Um, I would imagine there was about as much action in the Hallam zone as there was in the Uni off zone. So they'll be very, very happy with that one. Yeah, penalty killing is so important in this game. If, you, if you've got a man down, you need, your, you need your boys to get on the ice and defend you and make up for your mistake. But here come Hallam again. It's Fraley. Oh, and he's done it. What a goal. Dibble through everybody. It was the high turnover again for Hallam. They've just killed that two minutes of power play action for the University of Sheffield and they followed it up with a goal themselves. A really nice, again, a really nice wraparound from Brian Fraley. Well, well, you fear for Uni here because the game getting away from them already in the first period. They didn't use the power play well and now equal strength. Fraley's just run through everybody. Yeah, I think we always knew that Ryan Fraley was going to be really important here. He actually got 28 points in 27 games in 2018. And he was once on the books of the Edinburgh Capitals in the EIHL, the top division of UK hockey. So this is a real superstar. Uni again, save Stevenson. 
We've not been able to get it out the zone. Uni haven't been able to get it out the zone at all. Sam Park in there, trying to be on the forecheck, but is he supported? Maybe an opportunity for an odd man Ross for Uni of if the pass was made well there. Brayley again. again. He's wonderful today. The shot deflected there from Danny Hay to the captain. Brayley really? again. Steventon makes a good save. It's just constant peppering the net from Hallam here, and Ryan Fraley is absolutely on it early on here. Yeah, just watching the replay, he's just such a fantastic player. We saw some talent from him last year, and that was heading straight into the top corner. Good glove by Steventon. Uni win the face-off again. Really nice pass into the right side of the ice. Punched away, really, from Nick Winters, the shot from Michael Shalossi. Yeah, that was a good blocker there. Here come Hallam again. Bearing down the goal, but Fraley's lost the puck just a little bit behind him. There is an apology there, I don't think he meant it. Michael Shalossi's not happy. This uh, has Williams been a lot more feisty than last year. It is. Um, we saw a little bit um, of the uh, afters in the first period, but nothing quite like this as we see Lawson Glasby coming off onto the bench and he'll be pretty disappointed. He, it was potentially partially his fault for that uh, third goal. Um, and as the captain, he'll be trying to pump his team back up as Uni win another uh, one of these face-offs, they've done very, very well with them. And it's given them the opportunity to have possession of the puck through neutral ice. As they come down on the left-hand side. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, he's going through. A good save, Winters. Oh, and he freezes shot. it really well. There a are no poor leftovers. shot there. Yeah, it was a poor shot, but Winters really does make sure there are no leftovers at the doorstep uh, for the attackers. Shalossi couldn't quite find. Yeah, it's a weak one, really. Uh, oh, from Sam Parkin. Parkin. Shalossi oh. wanted to be there. Uh, we also saw Ishbel Wright hoping that there were some scraps, but there weren't. And that's what Nick Winters gives you as a, as a netminder. And yet again, he freezes it. Flashes a lovely bit of leather. Yeah. And it's in. Just uh, four drop. minutes and 30 left here in the first period of Sheffield Varsity 2024. The opener here at the Sheffield Arena, the ice hockey. Um, a mixed game uh, between University of Sheffield and Sheffield Hallam. Oh, it's in front. Can Uni use it? Yes, oh, yes. they can! Who? Parkin again. That's the second of the game. And that is just what they needed before the first interval. Well, we've been talking about how important it is for Nick Winters to make sure there are no scraps. And this time there were. Sam Parkin at the doorstep, making his way into the crease and saying thank you very much. And they're right back in this at 4-2. What does this do to your interval team talk there? Well, it changes it. They were really up against it for a few minutes in the middle of this period. But, you know, look, University, they know what they can do. They know they can score goals. And they know, actually, Nick Winters isn't Superman. He is fallible. And if they take every one of those chances, they can win this game. It's only a two-goal hole. But maybe we'll be uh, eating our words as uh, Hallam with a couple of uh, high attempts at a turnover. Joel Miles forced onto the ground there and he couldn't quite win it at the second time of asking. Forward come Uni. Uni carrying it into Hallam Ice again. In Real front of goal, not quite. And a shot goes high, high into the netting. Nick Winters that sees block. that sail very, very high over his net. He'll be a lot more happy with that one as your assistant uh, captain there, Adam Brooks Smith, skates back. A really. Uh, Good block there from the goal scorer for Hallam, Joel Marsh, making sure it goes over the top. And that means we'll have a face-off here in Uni territory. And Hallam territory, territory for Uni to potentially get the third goal. Will Shalossi on the face-off here. Let's see what he can do. Shalossi beats Haid, sends it back towards the point. Oh no, but Maybe here comes Hallam. Break away. Ryan Frayley again. Lovely turn. White at the back door and they've scored! There's number five! It's James White, and just as we think that the University of Hallam are right back in this yet again, Sheffield Hallam say no, no, no. 
James White sends it top shelf. It's a lovely send. Well, that is, they still won the face off, but they gave it away cheaply. And you just cannot be doing that if you're uni. You're under so much pressure already. And mistakes like that, they aren't going to fly. Yeah, but James White, one of the few players in this team that shoots left. Generally, he'll play on the right wing, but he's come over to the left. And it's a really, really good bit of play from Ryan Fraley yet again. A wonderful apple there, um, using the puck so, so well. Um, really uh, similar to the assist for Ben Davies' goal that kept Team GB in the top division of the World Championships in 2019. Maybe he's been watching the highlight reels uh, coming into this game. Masuki Batana with the long shot there, but nothing giving. Thomas Dermott, the captain, just sweeping around there. Fraley so cool, really, as he was going through there. He knew that maybe there was an opportunity to go for it himself, but he knew that James White was with him. Wonderful, wonderful bit of play. Captain all the way through. Maybe that's going to be tripping. Fraley again with it. No one really in the slot for Hallam at the moment. Ooh, Thomas Dermott, the captain, no tried it there. Here come Uni off Sam. again. This isn't potential on the rush, It's always Sam Parkin, he's in there. Yeah, they've only sent two forward yet again. We see a lot of that. Um, I think when Hallam get forward, they get forward in numbers. And here they go again. There's the breakaway. Fraley, great save. Good save, by Stephen, Stephen Tun. And that'll be a, a bit of a confidence booster for Stephen Tun. He's uh, had a really tough start to varsity this year, but that's, it's a really comfortable save. Um, and if he keeps doing that, he'll feel more comfortable with uh, some harder efforts. That one was, of course, going to right towards the top corner. Had him a lot of skill with their shots. Uh, Uni not necessarily getting as much on the shots. And uh, it's been a little bit easy for Nick Winters uh, quite a lot of the time. Glasby with the puck now. Couldn't find the pass. Here come Hallam. Down the boards. Just, there. Yeah, Josh Humphreys giving it away there, but Stevenson they've won it back potentially. Stevenson coming out of the crease, and he's done really well. Decisive. I like that. Decisive. Yeah, exactly. Um, you do worry after a couple of opportunity, uh, a couple of mistakes from a goalkeeper that they'll they'll be scared to do something like that. But he went forward. He took the puck. He took the initiative, and I'm sure Uni will be very happy to know that he's got that in him today. So here we have another face-off. Shalossi and Keeling, and Shilossi Uni winning win again. again. He's very, very good on the face-offs. I think we saw too many Hallam wins last year, but Shalossi coming in for his first varsity ones, and he's done very, very well. Parkin driving Uni forward, as we've said a lot already, and a shot that is easily saved. Yeah, we've got Nick two Winters. minutes left of the first period. Um, and, and look, I think for uh, for Michael Shalossi, it'll be a pretty tough a uh, few minutes talking to the team. What would you say to them right now in a three-goal hole in the first period of Varsity 2024? It, it's so easy to tell them to stop making mistakes, but with a crowd like this, it isn't, it isn't that simple. If I'm uni, I, there's nothing to lose. You're three goals down already, let's give it something. Yeah, they, they uh, tried keeping it tight and it didn't work, so now they need to go for it, and here they go for a shot. Saved by Winters, it comes away. Hallam cleared the zone. Just playing it back to Joffrey Hargrave. Yeah, consolidating possession, but really you think they want to go for it, score the final goal of the period. There goes Joe Marsh. A shot deflection off of Steventon's glove. Both sides know that the final goal of the period is important. Hallam can't quite do anything with it behind the net. Shalossi, stretch pass to Pitt Brook. Pitt Brook, Brook Smith even, my apologies. Glasby driving forward now. Final minute. What can Uni do with the puck here? Just no one there by the, uh, by the crease, even in the slot at all there. Over back by the blue line. Puck Nothing frozen. Lewis Miles can do there. Steventon's really grown into the game, you know, he uh, hasn't played in the net in varsity for a long time uh, and, you know, playing with 8,000 people staring at you, it's not easy and this is a really, really rowdy crowd but, you know, for any player it's important to grow into this game and I think he's doing that now. It's a shame it couldn't have been a 
about 20 minutes earlier, but really pleased to see that. Uh, not not even the time, time. Just, just five goals sooner. We, it, 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 it could be two all if it wasn't for some defensive. And no, it's not just him. I don't want to just blame the goalkeeper here. The, de the defence needs to communicate a lot more. And I think uh, going back to Michael Shalossi. Just past the post. Holly Neiman trying to chip it in there, but nothing doing. Radu Nikolai driving forwards, and that is an easy save for Nick Winters. Throws it with just five there. seconds on the board uh, to round out this half, uh, this period rather. And not a lot can be done from the face off. They'll need to win this. And they'll need to send it back towards the, the, uh, the point. They'll need to dump it on the net. They don't have a lot of time to do it. Can they get that shot away? Try and rip one in. And if it can be a two-goal game going into the second period, that would be massive. Yeah. Yeah. Psychologically like more so than the, uh, than the scoreline, potentially. They do win it. Won it. But Another save. Easily saved. Easily save. Two seconds two to seconds. go. Probably not enough to do anything with that. Nick Winters knows that. He's happy. It's been a good first period for him. Absolutely. Going back to what you said about Michael Shalossi, if you're the Hallam manager, what are you doing? What are you saying? Well, I think you're saying just don't do anything silly. You don't don't give up three goals. But also, they can continue doing what they're doing because it's working. Uni are going to get more tired if they keep trying to commit players Shlossi into Hallam's the zone. And, and the there we go. The that is the end of the first period of action here at the Sheffield Arena. Sheffield Hallam University 5, the University of Sheffield 2. And we're going to hand you over to our presenting team with Amelia Oates. Thank you, Ollie and Dennis, and welcome back to what was such an exciting first period of play. Seb, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I think me and Laurie played it down too much, but it absolutely was full of excitement, goals, and lots of drama at both ends of the of the uh, the ice hockey pitch. What a, uh, a first period of, of a match that certainly was. Yeah, of course. You know, if you told me before the uh, start of the game that we'd have a first period as exciting as the whole of last game's match, I would not have believed you. Seven goals in one period is amazing. Both teams looking promising. Hallam got their necks in front. They're showing a bit more quality for me, but so far I'm really enjoying it. So, standout players. Obviously, you had your predictions before the first period. Were your predictions, Matt? Well, you know, I um, I have a big grin on my face right now because. <laughs> person I, uh, I highlighted before the start of the game, Sam Parkin, the uni of, he's had a brilliant half. I said he'd be their main man going forward and he's been absolutely that. Two goals already and they're two good goals. First one is uh, particularly, you know, he's beaten a few men, put it home. Even the second, it was a scrappy sort of a poacher's goal. Um, but that, you know, it still requires a lot of effort that. You've got to have that attacker's instinct to be on the end of shots like that. Um, he's been really impressive. By far, Unioff stand-up player this half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The parking building on that momentum and, and yeah. that performance from last year as well, building on that great sort of highlight and in, in that first period has shown the qualities that you spoke about pre-match as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. But for me, Unioff's best player. I think, you know, if there's going to be any more goals, they're going to come through him. He's, and, you know, he's scored his goals. He's also had lots of chances as well, that's not to get that. He's been constantly active all across the pitch in both defensive and offensive zones. You know, he, he's been where they need him and more. I'm really looking forward to seeing him play in the next two periods. Seb, what about the Sheffield Hallam team? Yeah, well, for Hallam, I think my standout player has to be their number nine, Flyley. Two goals so far in the period and one assist as well uh, from the five goals that Hallam have scored so far. Every time they come forward, Hallam, they just look like they're going to score. And Friley already has two and I wouldn't be surprised if he got any more. So, and Friley for me, definitely the uh, player of the match so far. And can we talk about those goals? Within the first two and a half minutes, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. An electric start, which I think none of us here in the arena really expected. But as you said, only two and a half minutes on the clock and Hallam took an early lead and they maintained that lead throughout that first period um, and showing sort of the, the dominant force that they have been prior to last year's varsity. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going into the second period with a 5-2 lead. It's pretty phenomenal, really. Let's not forget about the goals from Sheffield University. What, what was that like? Absolutely. Um, you know, they, they, they sort of hit back quite quickly. Um, I think, how, obviously, after, after such a quick goal, it's so easy to drop your head, uh, concede another few. I think uh, uh, the goal from Sam Park came at a really important time. Of course, they couldn't quite keep it up, conceded two uh, goals quite consecutively after. 
Um, it came exactly when they wanted. I think if they don't score then and they concede two, two nil can quickly turn into three. Uh, it, it came at the right time. It was a really good finish from Sam. I think uh, Uni could, Uni off couldn't build on it uh, after, but yeah, it came at the right moment. Yeah, and of course we've got the ice hockey going on, but we've also got the cheerleaders dancing behind us, which adds a little something in the interval time. So let's talk about your expectations for the next period. Sam, any thoughts? Well, I'll be honest, going into this first period, I did think it would be a little bit quiet, a bit of a cagey affair, not too much going on. But what do I know? Clearly, five goals <laughs> uh, to Hallam and two to University in that first period. Absolutely phenomenal start. The second period, perhaps, there might be some tired legs in there, maybe. But I'm sure the, the continuation of the, uh, the formidable attacks in, uh, from either team, I think, will continue in the second period. Yeah, um, so we, we set for the same as, as, as before, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Hallam are going to come out with a chip on their shoulder. They've got a three goal cushion. That is so important in games like this with such uh, a pressure, with such big atmospheres. You know, as you can see, once they started going a few goals up, the Hallam fans really got behind them. Unioff fans are sort of dying down as the game slips away from Unioff. To have that backing from so many thousands of fans, huge for a game like this. Um, yeah, I really expect Hallam to come out, look the stronger side. We touched upon it already that uh, Hallam have a larger squad. It's going to start proving dividend. Uni, Uni have really needed a strong period to be three goals down right now with four less players. It's going to take a toll on their legs. I think it's going to be really hard for Uni have to find a way back into this game. Yeah. You mentioned there a little bit about Hallam. I think I mentioned before, every time they come forward, they just look like they're going mm. to score. Um, and as two of the goals have come through Friday, but even every other player's come forward, they look like they're going to score. I think partly the maybe university of goalkeeper is sometimes to blame. There was one Friday a goal where he went round pretty easily, past past the netminder in fact, and, and fired the, the second goal. So Hallam come forward, Uniov got a little bit of work to do at, at the back, but Hallam won't, won't mind about that. The five two advance, uh, five two ahead after the first period, and, and they'll be more than happy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really easy to focus on uh, the, the mistakes from the goalie Stevenson in that first half. However, I, I don't think it's fair to say he's had a bad half. He's made some really top saves, especially sort of entered the last quarter of the period. He was brilliant. He made two consecutive saves. You know, if those two go in and they go into the break seven two down, the game can run away with them. You know, seven containing to fourteen, containing to twenty one. Uh, I think he has he has kept his team in there near the end of the half. Yes, he could have done better on a few of them, but you know I, I think we've got to stay positive here. He's made some really good saves, and especially in such a big game, mistakes are bound to happen. I don't think it's his fault. Yeah, he's he spilled one. I'm sure if you put me between that goal, it'd be about 20. So <laughs> that's why he allowed it. Let's not forget about the opening ceremony. I mean, it's not just the opening ceremony of the ice hockey. It's the opening of the whole of Sheffield Varsity this year. What was the atmosphere like? Well, it was given sort of Olympic-esque vibes, really. They've rolled out the red carpet for the people of Sheffield to see, and uh, various representatives of uh, both universities were out on the uh, yeah, on the ice, really. And it was quite nice, you know, that they, they all the individuals from the unis brought uh, representative flags, and it was, it was quite nice, really. Um, and yeah, it was nice to see, nice to sort of build up that atmosphere. We had the national anthem, of course, and, and then just throughout the, the, the entire atmosphere throughout the first period as well was absolutely phenomenal. Every time a goal went in, there was a massive roar, massive cheer, and it was just absolutely brilliant. I mean, Lloyd, you, you were incredibly impressed, weren't you? Oh, absolutely. It was, it was electric, especially to begin with. So much chanting going on. Uh, Union fans, especially to begin with, I know it helps that we're stood behind them. Really, really, really loud, especially after the goals. As the half progressed and Hallam sort of so to get away a bit, Hallam fans grew into it. So some some good chance going on that I can't quite repeat on camera, but I was I was really impressed. As you said, that opening ceremony very Olympic. -esque. This is really you know the Sheffield Olympics, isn't it? And that opening opening ceremony really you know, epitomised that. I loved it. I loved the representation of all the other captains from the other teams. It's unique to see this. When we covered it last year, we didn't get that opportunity to see the opening ceremony. It's fun to see. You know, it's it's a bit of fun. Um, and I, I, I really did that, it was a nice touch. And dare I ask either of you your score predictions for the end of the second period? Or do we just not know what's going to happen? Well, given myself and Lloyd both said it be 2 0, 3 0, I'm not quite sure. And that's the right question. But I think Helen will carry on with, with their strong advantage in the second period. They're already 5 2 up, 5 2 up. They could extend that even further in the second period. And the University have got a man to decline, but it's only one out of three periods in the match that have been played. So plenty of time for them to get back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hallam looked rampant, especially towards the end of that second half. Every time Uni went forward, got a goal, Hallam's response was incredible. Uh, especially after the, both, um, both times Uni have scored, immediate responses. You know, you always say you're most vulnerable when you've scored. 
proved it there and then. I think the next goal is going to be really important for the Uniov team. I think if they don't get it, Hallam could really run away with it, come away, you know, winning, you know, by, by five, by six. Uh, they look so dangerous going forward. Every time Hallam go forward, they look like they're going to score. I mean, I, I think Hallam are going to pull away. I think, you know, they'll get another few. I'd love another seven goal half, but I think it'll die down for this period. Maybe another few goals for Hallam, but I don't see Uniov coming back in. We mentioned it a little bit briefly, but I don't think we can quite put into words how great of an atmosphere it is here at the Utilita Arena. You know, fans cheering, chanting, just electric atmosphere mm. all over the, the, the arena, really. And it's certainly be one, uh, the opening ceremony, the whole opening display this evening, is certainly one that fans will never forget, given that the opening ceremony is because, take that, I'll play later on at Sheffield Arena. And were there any particular standout moments for either of you that you'd love to see again in the second period? I mean, for me, that um, was it was the third goal. I um, know well, the fourth goal even for uh, Hallam, which was such such an impressive run. I think we've seen quite a few. You no, know, I dare I say scrappy goals where it's bouncing about, keeper still, someone pokes home. That goal's with pure class. Beat a few men. It was it was Lionel Messi-esque. If you if you know which goal I'm on about, it was really impressive. Beat a few men, put it right past the keeper. Nothing Stevenson could do about that one. Now, for me, I'd like to see University grow into this game a little bit more. You know, they have great chances ahead of the pitch, but I'd just like to see them a little bit more solid towards that back end. You know, giving this support to the to netminder who is struggling at times, but. If, if he sort of grows into the game a little bit more, his confidence will grow and the team, I think, will, will get back into this one. Well, thank you guys so much for your thoughts on that first period. We'll be back very shortly after a short break. Take that! <laughs> <laughs> I have to get it.
Pojď o místě. Pojď o místě. Varsity is a competition between the two Sheffield Unis. It is one of the biggest intercity sporting events in Europe. The first tournament was in 1997. This year, after a brief break from COVID, we're on the 26th year of Varsity. Currently, the win to loss ratio is Unioff has won 13 Varsities, Hallam have won 10, and we've drawn two. Unioff have won the last nine Varsities in a row. It's been tough for us these past few years, so it would be very big if Hallam win Varsity this year. Varsity is a great opportunity for people to support not just the universities as a whole in the sports but also the individuals that participate you know there's a lot of uh, preparation and hard work that goes into all sports we have over 2,000 athletes competing 80 events across 30 different sports and over 15,000 spectators this year varsity looks a little bit different we're shaking it up a bit and the opening event is going to be on the 20th of march and it's going to be the ice hockey event and then we're closing it here for the men's ones basketball at the new sharks arena what is the Varsity Oath? The Varsity Oath is something that's adopted by everyone, whether you're playing, supporting, and it's built on four words. Pride, sportsmanship, fair play and respect. Respect is a massive, massive part of boxing and obviously Varsity as a result. At the end of each bout, people always shake hands or give each other a hug. Fair play is important because you know, if you're not playing by the rules, people can get hurt. Sportsmanship means being respectful to the other team and having good morals when playing. Varsity Oath is pride. The significance of Varsity is major. Whether that's playing or supporting, it is more than just competing. Come on, Hallam. Go Uni off. Thanks Emilio, what an experience it is to be able to commentate on such a special game here at the Sheffield Arena. We've had one period of fast frenetic action from both Hallam and the University of Sheffield. The score currently lies...
come back into this game. Dennis, how do you think the second period's going to go? I think it's with, without trying to make everybody too upset, I think it's going to be a very, very turgid and, and a well-fought half. I think Uni will do very well to score here. And if they do, it might bring a little bit of life into the game. But I think Hallam might be OK to just shut up shop here. They're three ahead. And that can, look, and in, uh, in ice hockey, that can be a little bit of a dangerous lead. You can get complacent. But I, I, I genuinely think it may stay the same score into the third period. We'll have to see. What do you think? Yeah, you wonder whether they can take the, the, uh, the chance of doing that. Um, maybe they want to keep doing it, uh, what they're doing, believing in themselves, maybe trying to make it six or seven, um, just to make it really comfortable going into that final period um, and using uh, the, uh, the bigger bench that they have. However, it could be the case that they say, you know what, we've done what we need to do in the first period. We very rarely give up um, a lead in the period. Of course, they've only ever not won it once in the arena. Turn to action in the varsity second period. 20 more minutes coming up, and already a call on the play. Um, it only took six seconds this time. Um, you do wonder if that's going to be how it is. And there you see Punk for Suki Watana. He is from Thailand, and he is a bit of a prodigy. Uh, he played in qualification for the Olympics in 2019. He's an under 20 Asian Division One champion. He did miss a penalty last year in varsity. Um, his shot hit the bar. However, he'll be uh, pretty happy with how he's done so far in this game. That's an early stop for Callum Stevenson, getting right on it and covering. Danny Hay testing him out early on in the period, but uh, very comfortable for Stevenson. Yeah, he'll hope to uh, be able to put the mistakes in the first period behind him, I think, and that will only boost his confidence. Yeah. Those shots in and around his body are hard to deal with, obviously. You've got to get that glove on it, and he did that. That's exactly what he needed. He's definitely doing a lot better now, and uh, you need a really good face-off there, and they come forward through the neutral zone, but Hallam do well to break up the play. Yeah, that's and a good bit of housekeeping there. by Hallam there. They've done well. And now they're coming themselves. Shot, Shot block just Glasby wide. Glasby trying to play it forward, but can't find the pass. John Marsh really taking it to uni. Uh, off the one-man show at the top on his own, um, but obviously he did score a very, very nice first goal of the game and that really gave Hallam something to use for the rest of the 20 minutes. Oh and that's a big hit. A really good hit by the benches. More scrappy play but Hallam do very very well. Basuki Ratana back up now on the right wing. Charles driving doing well to get through. And he's managed to keep it. He was uh, looking to use Basuki Ratana but couldn't find him. Parkin chasing, but can't quite get it. Almost an icing call, the referee was about to do it. Nathan Bennett instead sweeping up. A really good change of possession there. Shalossi, oh, can't quite find the pass. And Nathan Bennett again. And now Hallam will come out with James White. Fraley attacking, obviously Fraley's he was so, so good, good in that first period. Frozen by Stevenson. Ryan Fraley showing his stick skills again there. Just, I mean, it's, it's hard to stop going on about Ryan Fraley, but here is that hit over by the benches. A huge one on for Suku Watana. He'll be feeling that one tomorrow, you feel. He took it well up immediately, really good. Yeah, but that is the sort of intensity player. that you can expect from this sort of game. Face off, Uni. One again. Joffrey Hargreaves chasing him. Will Shalossi now. A little bit of a lull in the crowd here. It could be, as you've said, a really quiet lull. Um, Michael Shalossi, father of Will, playing through, and that is blocked over the boards. A nice poke check. But as you see, um, on your screens there, the two players, they're friends, they are friends, they play in the same team for the Sheffield Bears, they'll know each other's games very well. It's an interesting dynamic for a game like this. It's very, very rare that such a, a hugely important game is full of people that know each other as well. Another face-off face again. 
And that is again gone over the boards after a save by Nick Winton with the leather there. Little word from uh, Michael Shalossi there in the ear of Nick Winters. I wonder what that's about. Just before heading over to his position on the face-off. Yeah, it, it's surprising if there are any uh, angry words to exchange because, of course, they know each other so well that uh, Shalossi works hard with Nick Winters. He'll be very happy with how he plays for the Sheffield Bears under him. Into the corner by Will Shalossi, but not found. Uni really taking it to Hallam more than we may be expected uh, in the opening moment of this middle period here at the Sheffield Arena. Work on some parking. Looked like he wanted to dump it on the net, but it's cleared away well, and uh, maybe an opportunity here. The icing wasn't called, um, it wasn't quite in their own zone, but it's missed out. Shalossi. Oh, and it's oh, it! it. Behind the goalie! Off his skate, maybe? We'll Let's see. see! We'll have to see the replays. We'll see it here. Indeed, it went, I think it went in off Nick Winter's stick, maybe. But it, no matter how it went in, the fact of the matter is the first goal of the second period goes to the University of Sheffield. And we're here at 5 3. Well, that, that is just that's cheeky, Ollie. That's so cheeky. It is. Why it is he is. trying that? And Will Shalossi with another goal. I mean, that look, when you're behind like they are, you have to try new things out, and he's tried it, and it's worked out. Nick Winters will be disappointed, but Will Shalossi, following in his father's footsteps here at Varsity, scores another goal, and Uni, are they back in this, or will they concede again straight away? That's really good from Uni. That's just what they needed coming into this period. Yeah, well, just before the goal, I was going to ask you, who's going to be more happy with how this period started? And I think now we can pretty comfortably say Uni. We were worried that it would be a bit turgid, maybe a, a straight block from Hallam, but they haven't been able to keep them out. And yeah. it'll be interesting to see where we go from here. Eight goals, a really good spectacle for the neutral. Anyone that coming to this game, expecting it to just be another university match. It's not that. This is Sheffield Varsity. This is ice hockey. This is some of the best players at this level in this country. And uh, they're putting on a pretty good show for us here. A really high turnover from Uni. No offside call. And no one at the back door to Can't poke that one home. Couldn't find Radu Nikolai. That's a big hit on the boards again on Chelossi. And that's going to go through to Nick Winters. Very happy to just play that to Fusuki Watana, who uh, just holds off and gives Hallam some time to breathe. Well, that's another high new. turnover. Oh, that's a fantastic hit. Maybe a naughty one, but the uh, officials don't decide that it's too much. Oh, wow. And it's another. What's and happening? Boy, do we have a game on our hands here at the University of Sheffield. Some wow. people thought the uni were down, that the uni were out, but immediately two early goals for the University of Sheffield. Radu Nikolai it is, poking home. Nick Winters can't do anything about that one. It's a 5-4 game. I mean, how good has Radu Nikolai been for uni over the years? And Sam Parkin again involved. Just getting that assist, getting that shot off. It was, an it, it was a good save by Nick Winters, but he couldn't keep the scraps out. Oh, it's wonderful hands, but left, right, and good night from what? Radu Nikolai. And that really does make this an interesting game because Hallam, they can't just shut up shop now because trying to do that, they've conceded twice. Nikolai there just dangling in front of the goalie and, and so, so good for the stick work. Let's well, see what is in store in this crazy game next. Nine goals in the first two periods. Clearly some good words from Michael Shalossi uh, in the first break there in those 15 minutes that we had. Um, the only break, really, we've managed to have from this excellent action on the ice, live on Ford TV. And as we've said, we will be coming live to your screens across Varsity. We'll be back with some Rugby League, with some Rugby Union, with some boxing, and we'll give you a delayed stream of the football. Well, here comes Fraley again. Save, Stevenson. Well, Uni were attempting a, a, an aggressive forecheck there, trying to press early and hard, and Hallam played straight through them. Well, if it's working for them now, then you never know. But you, look, 
It's a, it is a short bench, 14 players taking on 20. Um, it worked last year, it was 13 um, players on the uni bench um, in 2023, and they managed a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a victory there. Um, but yeah, two really good goals um, and some really high chances. Are they going to be able to keep it up for more than the opening five minutes of this period? Luke Reed here driving forward for Hallam, of course, scorer of the first goal of this crazy, crazy game. Let's see what they can do. Now here come Uni again. Not quite making it for Ishbel. In front of goal, but turned away. That could have gone anywhere. Thus is the nature of ice hockey. Hallam content to come away with it now. Ryan Just Fraley, about Hallam. keeping the zone. Oh, it's in front of goal. Oh, well swept up by Uni. I'm sure you can hear the cheers wherever you are watching this, whether you're in the nursery tavern at bar one or watching at home. It is an excellent atmosphere. And here come Uni again. You can sense it in the crowd, can't you? Uni smell blood here. I think they really do, and that's why they've kept this up. Um, you do wonder how long they'll be able to keep it up, as we keep saying, but it's working for them early on. They're having just about as many chances as Hallam are. Of course, they were outshot by almost four times last year, but I don't think we'll be able to say that at the end of this game. Not at all. I think that is our third icing call of the game so far. So that's going to be a face-off deep in Hallam territory for Uni. Let's see if they can win it. Yeah, a real opportunity every time that uh, there's a face-off in the Hallam zone because Uni can make the most of these, pushing them back towards the point and uh, dumping some shots Ooh. on there as they try to do there, but they uh, lose the zone. Some really good high pressure from Hallam. Yeah, Joffrey Hargreaves is attempting a shot from the point there. Couldn't quite made it and fanned a little bit at it. Oh, and there's a ref's whistle there somewhere. What's that for? Another break in play. And there on your screens, you're seeing Joseph Faulkner, who was formerly of the Peterborough Phantoms. He was a champion with number 15, Adam Broughton of Hallam. They both played together. And indeed, Joffrey Hargreaves was in the same team. So under 15 champions all together. It just shows how well some of these players know each other. Um, a really interesting as Horner drops the puck, um, as it would have been an offside call there. Suzuki Batana driving it forward, gets the puck back. What can he do? Bit of a call this time by you. No, no! It's spilled again Stevenson. by Stevenson. What's he doing? Well, that is huge for Hallam. That is brilliant. That's just what they wanted. It was hopeful from Fasuki Batana. Oh, He'll be very happy with how that's gone. Uh, off the stick, off the pads, and into the net. Really well, Stevenson, he Kyle needs Stevenson. to take a look at himself here. Again, Uni have been building pressure, and again, they've been let down by their goalkeeper today. No, we were talking before the game how important Yuki, Kadu, uh, Yuki Higuchi was in 2023, the hero of the Uni's first win here at the Sheffield Arena. But unfortunately, there were big skates to fill, and Callum Stevenson not maybe managing to keep up with the high standards here at Varsity. Ollie, what does, what does that do for the pressure that Uni were building there? I think they're going to have to keep it up. Um, I think they know what works. I think they know that they can't just hold back because they can't necessarily rely on being able to snuff out any of those hopeful shots. So they have to keep the puck away from their own zone. They have to keep trying uh, to do it themselves. And it was working at the start. Fasuki Watana again driving, helped score that goal just then. Saved by Stevenson this time, but it's recycled. Hallam still have the puck. Back post, not quite there. So they play it towards the point. Hallam, but they lose it. Uni have a great chance here, but it's well blocked by the Hallam defence. Fasuki Watana again involved. He's been all over the place today. He really is a fantastic young player, 20 years of age. Uh, playing for Hallam, he's been all over the place and uh, he's really taken the game by the scruff of its neck. Oh, a fantastic poke check, but there's always a Hallam player there. Just the uni coming forward again, but alone. A 
Nadu Nikolai does well to uh, gain possession of the puck. Couldn't quite do it all alone there for Come Hallam. Here come Hallam again, Nathan Bennett, round the back of the goal. Played off to James White, driving forward. Can he receive the puck back? No, he can't. Joel Marsh. Happy to slow it oh, down. It. Use some possession in the uni zone. That's Ryan Fraley uses the boards. Hope for one, fizzes wide. What can Hallam do here? They're pressing hard. Oh! They've done it again! Oh, it's in! I mean, that's huge for Hallam. Where it's come from, we're not quite sure. Well, it just keeps happening. Look, in this game, if you keep dumping it on net, the chances are it's going to happen. I don't think Fraley even touches it. It's all Steventon again, unfortunately. It's really disappointing. He'll be really disappointed um, that this is the way that Hallam are scoring their goals. As you see, Captain Hayes there celebrating. Seven goals to four, they lead now. And that short opportunity for Uni to get back into the game looks like it might be gone as soon as it started. Radu Nikolai, I think that skate has come off there. That's unfortunate. He's been good for Uni so far. Just isn't getting down quickly enough, I think, Steventon. Um, a lot of the time. And it, 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 it's not nice to be talking about a player like this. Um, he is a good player. He's had consistently between 88 and 91 uh, percent save percentages across his Bears career. He's a good player. But this is Sheffield Varsity. It's not easy um, to come into a game and, and play like Yuki Higuchi did last year, to play like Nick Winters has been playing today. I, 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 think, I think that with Steventon, that... That goal necessarily isn't his fault, but his team are in it because of him. And when you're having a day like this, people will look at the goalkeeper. He needs to keep his head high well, because he has like made this, some important saves. Yeah, I think the defence just needs to protect him a little bit more. Um, it is, of course, easy to look at his mistakes and say it's all his fault. But I think at the end of the day, sometimes he's been put in positions that he doesn't deserve to be put in. Defence haven't quite been on it. Are they tired? Are they just overawed by the atmosphere, by the event? Either way, here at Sheffield Varsity, it we've, is Sheffield Hallam. Yeah, we've league. got a penalty here for delay of game, I believe. Just flicking that straight out of play. Yeah, we'll uh, await confirmation on that one. And it looks like it will be the second power play of the night um, for the University of Sheffield. Already Hallam managing to get it out of the zone. Oh, it's a yeah. Singular penalty for Nathan Otley there. Two minutes. Can Uni capitalise? They were building momentum, and this might be their chance to stamp their authority back on the game. Yeah, we uh, didn't see a uh, power play goal in 2023 from the University of Sheffield, but of course, it's a big opportunity for any team, and I'll be hoping that their special team will be able work just as hard as uh, the Uni of Sheffield mascot Rory is doing down by the ice in front of us. Really good from Hallam, you know, it's, it's asking a lot of your team to uh, come high and try and win the puck when you've only got four on the ice. However, they've done it well and uh, they've had more possession than Uni have uh, in the first 40 seconds of this power play. They've done incredibly well, I think, the important thing sometimes on the power play is to not sit too deep. It's very easy to fall into that trap, and Hallam have done the opposite, and it, it, it's worked well for them. Yeah, a really nice uh, pass across. A hopeful one there. Nick Winters makes the save and freezes it. Yeah, shot from Michael Shalossi there. A bit of a, maybe a bit of a hit and hold, but it was a good save by Nick. Still needed making, yeah. and it's going to be another face-off. Michael Shalossi, a robotics research fellow. He's the oldest player at Sheffield Varsity, 53 years old. Um, and as we've mentioned, he's been at every single Varsity um, as the Uni of win another. And that's just wide of the far post there. Yeah, Brooke Smith not quite finding his targets yet. He's had a couple of shots like that. And yeah, I think maybe he just needs to get one. 
Yeah, that we know he's a good player. We played last year um, and coached the second team. He had a goal disallowed um, as it hit the post in 2023. It didn't mean anything in the end as, uh, of course, there was a historic victory for Uni anyway. This year he has nine games, nine goals, eight assists for the first team um, of the Sheffield Bears. Brooke Smith on goal again there, not quite finding it. Glasby at the back. Driving forward, Uni keeps it going, not quite. Good defence there by Ben Crowther. Final few moments. And Howland returned to full strength. It's another successful penalty kill for those in white and maroon. They've done well. They scored the only power play goal of 2023 varsity. How important is it to stop those man advantages? Oh, well, I mean, it, it's almost, I mean, it should, in theory, be the biggest opportunity for either side when you're on the power play. You've got to make the most of it. You've got to dump shots on goal. And Uni haven't managed to make it because Hallam have done so, so well making the most of it. Um, actually having a lot of possession in Uni zone. What do you think Hallam are doing well to stop the power plays? I think they're, they're just not being scared. I think they know they're probably better man for man uh, than Uni of R. Um, and they're using that. They, it, you know, Mentally, they know that they've just completely shut down any chance of a Uni comeback in this period. Um, they know they're probably the Ooh, best. Oh, off the post, not quite for Hallam. Sorry to cut you off, please. Oh, absolutely, a, a really good uh, effort on the slap shot there. We, we, we mentioned the uh, the extra players that Hallam have and that fitness. Do you think that helps on the pilot of the kill? Yeah, I think it will, um, especially as we go into the uh, latter stages of this period. Um, it's such a, a go, go, go sport. Um, you know, that's why players can only be on the ice for a couple of minutes generally it's because you're constantly moving it's not like a, a game like football or rugby where you can slow down a little bit it's constant um, and you know, uni of don't have those breaks that Hallam are getting and it looks like we'll have another icing call here and we'll have another break in play there you see Joel Bark who plays for the Bradford Bulldogs in the NIHL 2 uh, North he's had 20 games and three assists from the D um, he's, a, he's a very good blue liner, he gets forward very well also, a, a real all-star um, in this university side. Just 19 years of age. Shot on goal, blocked there, Ishmael right in front of goal, no, no for Uni. Now Adam here come ball. Hallam, Adam Broughton with it. Can't quite find the pass. Yeah, he was just left all alone there. Ishmael right in front of goal there, we mentioned her. She scored one goal in uni competitions in her entire career for the Sheffield Bears. That is, of course, the mixed team with Hallam and Sheffield Uni. An excellent player, though, in the uh, Women's National League Elite. She's played for the Kingston Diamonds and also for the Sheffield Shadows in the division below. Um, look, it's, it's uh, really nice to see it's a mixed event, um, a real opportunity for everyone that's good enough to play in this game at the Sheffield Arena. Um, and she's an excellent player. As the University of Very Sheffield unlucky not come away couldn't from quite zone. find the puck in front of goal on that situation. Now Hallam have it at the bit back, bit of a lull in play for the moment, trying to find that stretch pass, but intercepted really well. Now here come Uni. Oh, what a tackle! Superb. Really good save from Nick Winters. Nathan Ortley as well getting a stick in there. Still an opportunity for Uni off though. Oh, it's just gone between the legs there. Yeah, reversed by Chloe Carter. Couldn't quite find Will her it was uh, in the slot. Here's Ryan, Ryan Fraley, Fraley again. So dangerous support. for Hallam. What can he do? Oh, oh save. Cheeky. Look to go top shelf to make it a hat trick. Lawson Glasby in the corner, trying to get rid of the puck, but he can't quite do it. Hallam still with it. Ryan Fraley before it's out back into centre ice. Nathan Bennett clearing up. And driving forward, makes it past one, makes it past two. Can he go all the way? He's going to try. No, saved by Steventon. That was wonderful from Nathan Bennett there. From the D, he's got four, uh, 13 assists 
for the Sutton Sting this season. That's the same team as the captain of Uni of Lawson Glasby plays for. And just look at this stick play there. Wonderful left, right. But in the end, did a bit too much. Steventon was pretty comfortable. Well, Zaloy, uh, Chelossi even, still on that face-off, and he's a doing really well in winning them. There. Oh, that's a, that's a flying saucer pass. Maybe a bit ambitious there for Uni. And it's back with Ben Crowther. He is driving forward. Oh, Pass one in the central zone. Pass two. Driving forward. Can he find a teammate? Ryan Fraley on goal, but wide. Nathan Bennett now in the corner. And taken away. Very well, well. composed there. Ryan Fraley, Ryan Fraley wins it back. Shot on goal, but over. Chased by Ben Crowther, back into his own zone. Three minutes left of this second period here at the Sheffield Arena. Hallam continue to lead seven goals to four. Um, but you yeah, have had plenty of opportunities in the second period. I think probably we're seeing a difference in quality and a difference in the size of the benches as we come into the second period here. And uh, that will be an icing call. There we have Thomas Dermott, the captain of the University of uh, Sheffield Hallam. Um, he's played in the national division um, for the Sheffield Steel Dogs, 43 appearances this year. He's also played for the GB University side. However, zero points this year um, in the national division, although he's got 16 points in eight games for the Bears in the university leagues. You saw Matthew Key, the sub goaltender there, just on the bench, and a, a fun little fact for everybody. The, that goalkeeper works at a shop called Puck Stop. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, he's had uh, nine games for the C team this year with a 0.9 uh, save percentage. You have it in Gretzky's office. Wrap around chance. Oh, just wide. Looking to replicate Ryan Fraley's attempt earlier in the same end. Back to the point now. Back around the boards. Using the boards, but it's not really the formation to use the boards with for yeah. the University of Sheffield. Oh, and Hallam have a little foul. bit of a chance here. Almost foul for Fasuki Matata. That's been called for icing again, too far over both lines. And that's going to be a face-off in the Hallam zone. Yeah, coming into the latter stages of the second period. And I'm sure Michael Shalossi will be uh, trying to work out what he's going to say to his players to try to give them as good a start to the third period as they had to the second, but here they go. Here come Uni, shot on goal, save Nick Winters. Radu Nikolai there. Couldn't quite recreate his goal in Varsity. The, goal, the game winner, of course, on penalties last year. First time for Uni in 17. Well, this isn't just a sporting fixture. This is a university event as well. And as you can hear, everyone's having a lot of fun here in the biggest ice hockey arena in the country. On a good day, this holds 9,300 Sheffield Steelers fans. We've got 8,000 varsity fans here today. And they're having a good day of it um, with alcohol Nicolai being Nikolai in the corner in front. Couldn't be finished by Brooke Smith. That's a good save by Nick Winters. And Parkin's going to send it down the ice. Nikolai chasing again, but has given up. Before a, a, a tasty stretch pass, and it's fallen to Hallam. Good save by Stevenson. Neil Orr it was with the attempt there. Yeah, good from Neil Orr. So we head into nice. the final minute. Back around the boards to Nathan Ottley. Forward yeah. for Uni, but... Really Bit trying to dump them on Steventon towards the end here. That's a poor giveaway. Last 30 Maybe seconds of this game, rush. what can Uni do? Yeah. Should maybe Brooke have Smith released still it. still fighting, shot on goal, blocked. Now oh, and Hallam are through. On the breakaway. 
Save. And well smothered. Yeah, Stevenson, Stevenson makes no mistake there. He freezes the puck and gives Uniov a chance to have a little bit of a breather with 15 seconds remaining. He's been better this period, Stevenson. He has. Better. The goals this half, yes, he's conceded another two, but none his fault, really. And he's uh, shorted up at the back a little bit there. Yeah, Joel Marsh just looking to uh, make it a second one. Probably the uh, final face-off of this second period. Was the captain Danny Hayes with the attempt there? And it's uh, exactly what Hallam would probably want with it being in the boards. Round the boards, and that will probably signal the end of the second period. And there you wow. have it. A great Another. second 20 minutes here at the Sheffield Arena of Sheffield Varsity's Ice Hockey Opener 2024. And we're going to hand over back to your presenting team. And next is Amelia Oates. Thank you, Ollie and Dennis, for your commentary. Guys, what were your thoughts on that second period point? Well, I mean, before we signed off last time, I said, you know, this this period, you know, maybe slow down a bit, maybe see less goals. How wrong was I? <laughs> Both teams came out, Uni Sheffield, all guns blazing, uh, got a two goals, thought they were going to come back into it. But it was a real tale of two halves. Hallam, as, as, as we saw in the first period, responded really well to the Uni of pressure. Um, and I, I, I think they've got it again. They're back in control. That's uh, the second half of the period. They were looking strong. Union creating very little chances. Yeah, I think it's Hallam's game at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the Uni uh, of Sheffield came out really strong, really fast there. Uh, two goal. Uh, two, yeah, two goals in just the first couple of minutes of that second period. So they sh must have sort of had some sort of team talk in, in that break because um, they came out fighting it, and that showed with the two early goals that scored in that period. But they couldn't quite managed to hold on to it and Hallam did come back as Lloyd said there showing some dominant attacking threats including the man I pointed out earlier on um, so yeah entertaining not as entertaining as that first period but certainly lively uh, and yeah what, what a great spectacle that we are seeing at the arena this evening. But would you say it's fair to say that there's been lots of opportunities at goal for the Union team they've really really tried. Mm. Yeah of course it's a thing you know I think it's been a quite an even split between chances for both Hallam and yeah. Union. The scoreline wouldn't suggest it. It's just, Hallam is so, so clinical going forward. Every time they go forward, they look like they're going to score. Union are having to work a lot harder for their goals. I think uh, a goalkeeper Union could have done a, few, a bit better on one of the goals. But, I mean, Hallam doing so well. I think Nick Winters for Hallam in, uh, in goal. Brilliant half he's had, or brilliant period he's had. Um, and especially, I think I think it's a testament to what a great goal it was for Slozzy to make it 5-3. Uh, he, he just curled it in inside the near post, just past Winters. And I thought, you know, it was a really good finish to put past such a good keeper. Really, really good skill there. Yeah, and, and for Hallam themselves, to be fair, University of Sheffield did create lots of chances. I mentioned the two girls earlier. They also had one that was cleared just off the line as well. So they are showing that there are there are qualities, uh, you know, in that sort of forward uh, area of the uh, of the ice. So I, I don't know. I think I think really uh, there, there is sort of still power in the tank, if you know what I mean, with with the University of Sheffield. But Hallam, they showed what they're capable of, it and they, they've come back and they've reasserted their the three goal leads uh, going into the final period of the game now. Any stand up moments for yourself in that? Second? It probably was uh, the University of Sheffield coming straight out, uh, straight from the box in that second period. I'm not quite sure any of us expected that the, uh, the Uni of Sheffield will come out uh, with such fight and such power straight after that uh, that first period where they, they, they were down by quite a margin to Hallam. So I was really impressed by uh, Uni of Sheffield in the, the first open stages. So that's my standout for me. Yeah, for sure. That sort of five minutes of madness for Uni of at the start of the second period, you know. You sort of had that belief they were actually going to come back. Obviously, they couldn't maintain it. I think after that, um, you know, they really died off. Uh, they had a power play for uh, one moment into the, sort of the middle of the half of the period. Um, and they couldn't make the most of it. After Hallam got that goal, uh, got uh, their first goal of the period, it died off for them. They have sort of lost all their momentum. Hallam picked it up. Yeah. And just a reference as well, I think there's a, an officer shootout going on behind us on the ice between the two sports and wellbeing officers 
from the University of Sheffield and then uh, the, also the one from Hallam, hence here, the loud cheering, I think it's 1-0 to Hallam so far. I mean the atmosphere has been great all evening and I want to say a special shout out to the cheerleaders who've done a fab job in our interval breaks. Any thoughts going into the final period? I mean this is really setting the precedent for the rest of the Barca competition. Absolutely, yeah. This, this game has, has had everything. It's had goals, it's had uh, exciting moments, it's had sort of goal line clearances as well. And I think it's a great sort of tone setter for the rest of Barca to come. Plenty of events uh, that will take place mostly after Easter, but we've got we've got a lot a lot of talent in on display in Sheffield. And tonight is the first night of many that we're going to see that talent on display. Yeah, I mean it's all or nothing now for Union. You can you can see by that period they can flip the game on their head in, in a matter of minutes. Just like last period, they got to, if they get two goals back, straight back in it. They're fighting for one more. It's just you know holding out with that momentum. Every time they've scored so far, they've conceded quite soon after. I think it's going to be really important if they do find themselves getting a goal in, keeping their heads on, you know, staying 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 calm, but also staying gritty, you know, pushing forward. It, it, it's, it's going to be a long period, 20 minutes all to play for they've really got to be on it from minute one straight in there get an early goal and I think they couldn't you know, push for it and you're talking about the momentum let's not forget Hallam have six extra players than the Union of Sheffield side do you think that's really going to come to their advantage heading into this last two uh, definitely third? particularly in this final third as you said when sort of the, the will start to get a little bit more tired legs in there there's a, there's a chance to change and and how them at, at, at an advantage because they've got more players at their disposal to do so. So I think that particularly in this final period, we will see that squad that's coming into uh, fruition a bit more. Yeah, I completely second that. I think this it's going to be really proving this final period how influential those you know those extra players are to have just roll and roll of fresh legs after such an intense hard game. It's not like there's not been full of it, uh, action. They've been going at it full time. Neither team has shown any sort of desire to slow down. I think the uni off players are going to be dead on the feet by the end of it. And, you know, fairly so. They've given it their all. I don't think they're at any fault with the scoreline so far. Both teams are really tried. But I do think Hallam are going to have such an advantage going in it with the fresh legs. Right. Any final words heading into the final period or score predictions? Dare even. Well, dare even, even say. I think our score predictions have been wildly. <laughs> Uh, a, 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 a drift of, of what has actually happened on the ice this evening but yeah just more of more the same really more excitement more drama uh, it's what we're here for it's what you guys are here watching you want to see drama you want to see excitement you want to see goals we've seen that already and we just continue that going into the last uh, last uh, sort of third of, of the match this evening yeah well I think we're miles off with every prediction we made so far not 2-0 not 3-1 whoever it was um, so you know don't take my, any of our predictions with a pinch of salt I still see Hallam walking away as victors. I think, I think I mean, they nearly pulled it back from a three-goal deficit in that period. I don't see them doing it this time. Fresh legs, all the skill at Hallam. I think they'll run away with it in this period. And for whichever side that wins tonight, what is that win going to mean for them going into the rest of the competition? Yeah, I mean, a lot. It'll set, sort of set the bar in terms of standard that they'll want to carry on going into the, the, the varsity fixtures. Um, the, in the rest of the week and then after Easter as well so yeah it's sort of a, a, a good starting point and a good sort of belief and determination to have already a win in, on, on your backs for, for whichever side comes on top at the end of it so massive in terms of uh, morale and sort of yeah have, knowing that you've already got one victory in the bag and especially in, in such a big arena with, in such a big uh, attendance as well yeah absolutely I completely agree you know these first few points are going to be vital you know whichever teams find themselves um, behind in the points they're going to be chasing shadows they're going to have the pressure on every game they need to start picking up points as to not you know grow too far away but as well you know how am I going to be really want to win this one if they lose this one it's 10 in a row it's a big milestone for uni off and I know that no one from Hallam want to be embarrassed quite like that finally any players that you think are going to be stand out for this period or could it just be a repeat of what we've already seen yeah well I was really impressed there, especially in the start of the period with a uh, with William Slossy he got the goal he got the assist for the second goal as well he looked really sharp quite agile on the puck uh, I'm excited to see him again in terms of Hallam. Every one of their players looks really strong from, from Winters in goal all the way through their team. It's just a real testament to how, how talented that whole team is. Sam Parkin as well, the man you of mentioned course, right, yeah, of right at the start. So we can't go without mentioning him. He, I think he got the second goal in, in that, that, that last period of play. So he, he's going to be influential for the University of Sheffield. For Hallam, I think you said Winters in, 
and as, as a netminder, it's, it's crucial as well, sort of preventing any university attack. But yeah, I think, I think there's been lots of different qualities on display throughout both sides, really, and lots of sort of players that will walk away with pride after the game this evening. And you talk about walking away with pride. I mean, for some players, this is going to be the biggest ice hockey match they ever play in their careers. What do you think that means to them? Absolutely a lot, really. You know, <laughs> playing in such a such a sort of a prestigious arena in, su in front of such a big crowd, it's going to mean a lot. You know, the, we thought there might have been nerves before that. They, they went out in that first period and proved us all wrong. But it will mean a lot for them, as you said. Probably the biggest match that match that they've ever played in, really. And um, so, yeah, it, it, definitely a momentous occasion for them. Yeah, I mean, with Union winning for the first time last year, all those players now having the taste of victory. They won't want to lose. They want to feel it again. They'll be hungry. But at the same time, Hallam, it'll be such a big thing for them to get back on winning ways. Dare I say, last year, perhaps you know, quite embarrassing for them to lose for the first ever time. Nobody wants to be the first team to lose to Union. To make it two times in a row, even worse. Hallam have done really well. They've looked hungry. They've shown their skill. I, I think both teams naturally want to win. I think Hallam are really getting on top at the moment. And just on a wider scale as well, the University of Sheffield are looking to win their 10th varsity in a row. Hallam did that up until 2012, but if they secure the uh, the overall varsity to win, then it will be 10 years in a row uh, that the University of Sheffield managed to clinch the varsity title. Well, we've certainly enjoyed the first two periods. I can't wait to see what happens in the final period. We'll see you shortly, but for now, we'll pass you over to Dennis and Ollie in the commentary. second break here um, in Sheffield Varsity 2024. We've got another 13 minutes until we're back for the final period. We've seen a game with 11 goals, um, which is a lot more than the four we saw last year and the five we saw before that. So, uh, Dennis, why do you think it's been such a high scoring game? I think both teams have thrown absolute caution to the wind without yeah. uh, trying to use a cliche. I think that they both really wanted it and after last year, certainly Hallam, you can see with their seven goals, they want to prove a point, massively. And I, I don't think that they are in a forgiving mood right now. Uni did really well also, not giving up, really giving it something. And it's still a three goal game. We, w we went into the second uh, period with it 5-2, it's now 7-4. You know, it's still that same deficit. I think the last period's a must watch. Yeah, I think we, we came into the game knowing that actually it was going to be very different to any uh, varsity we'd seen before because it's the first time where Uni come in as the reigning champions of this game. You know, I think maybe Hallam went into 2023 feeling like they'd had it won already. Um, with them, uh, you know, obviously 15 nil uh, ahead, and um, maybe they just felt that they'd won it already, and, and maybe just felt that they didn't need to do what they've been doing in this game. They've really had a lot uh, that they, they wanted to prove in this game and that's what they've done yeah I, I mean obviously so overall uh, this will be looking to be Sheffield Uni's 10th overall varsity win not the hockey overall varsity win in and row. Hallam really want to prove a point here ice hockey isn't usually the opener for us it's always usually the closer and I think this is a statement that Hallam really really need to make they obviously you mentioned they lost it last year that's the first time ever that they lost to Uni in ice hockey varsity and I don't think that was good enough for them and that's why they've come out in such an attack minded they were always going to be attack minded with Uni's small squad they were always going to have more space as the Uni players got tireder and tireder and I would expect to see more goals in this third period but ultimately I just think that it's always really an important game it can always throw up these huge results uh, and these absolutely you know end-to-end -end games and that's just it it is the nature of having such a big crowd this is the biggest crowd that some of these players will ever play in front of. And they want to make it count. And I think that's where your heroes come through. Yeah, and uh, Sheffield Varsity Ice Hockey is always one of the uh, very biggest events across Europe um, in terms of university. A little bit of uh, varsity history um, is that uh, back in the day, there were two different varsities. There was a winter varsity and a summer varsity. And actually, the Uni of Sheffield won every single uh, winter varsity outright but they never won the ice hockey when it was that event and then in recent years of course we've had this being the big showpiece closing event 
with the uh, closing ceremony and the trophy being presented to the sports officer on the ice. This time we've had the opening ceremony, the uh, closing ceremony is going to be at the brand new Cannon Medical Arena, a day of basketball and netball over in the Olympic Legacy Park. Um, we're really looking forward to that in a month's time and uh, we're going to hand back over to you just some general shots of the arena. So we're fortunate to be here, we're a student working committee that produces lots of content. So our main events are varsity and elections where we do big live streams. But we're definitely trying to push this year for other projects around that. Uh, a lot of our committee have got new ideas, which is really interesting to bring to the table. I want to do international students interviews. So this is something that we can bring, uh, bring it up to the Forge TV meeting or anything that we want to do. What we're trying to work on at the moment is celebrating Sheffield's music scene and we're going to be live streaming local bands and we really want people to get involved. So anything you want to get involved with, anything you want to make, that's what Forge TV is all about. I got involved um, because I saw the Forge TV stall at the activities fair in my first year. I've always been interested in doing media because I did it for A-level, but then I've come to university to do engineering, so I wanted to do some sort of media-based activities. I was originally uh, a radio presenter, still am. Um, I do my own show on Forge Radio, and then someone came along and said, look, we need presenters for the elections coverage, you do politics, come and get involved, so I got involved through that. And then this year I decided to take up a committee role. I wanted to try something completely new that I'd never done before as well as push myself out of my comfort zone and Forge TV was perfect for that. I love TV. I was involved in Forge Radio before this but decided that TV was definitely more for me. I got involved with Forge TV because it was extracurricular activity. I've studied journalism so this would I thought would give me a great boost up and it definitely has. So when I was coming to uni I I had done a bit of photography before, but not much media of this sort of thing, so I wanted to try it out. And I saw Forge TV online, and I thought it looked interesting, so I thought I'd just go for it. I've become more confident. Just a few months ago, I never could have imagined doing something like this, but here I am. I've improved massively being on Forge TV. Um, when I joined the committee as head of graphics, I didn't really have any experience with Adobe Photoshop. I was making it up as I went along. Through repetition, by practicing a lot, I have become fully confident making graphics, designing logos, doing everything that's required for the role. I wouldn't say I'm really confident in all kind of cameras or anything that are related to TV so far. Still not confident to say that, but I'm really happy because I'm improving every day, every time I'm in Forge TV. So I've learned so much, both technical skills, but also just working with other people. So sort of teamwork skills, working these projects as sort of time management organization skills. Just been great to be part of a team. But I think generally uh, my on-camera presenting has got better. I had to read from a teleprompter, I had to be a lot more professional about it, I had to 
get used to knowing sort of scripts and things, whereas before I've always tended to just waffle on, like a bit like I'm doing now. I think just working as a team, the committee are all great people. And if there's something that you're not very good at, there's definitely someone else who can help you with it. What's great about Forge TV is you can get involved in front of the camera, behind the camera, whatever you want. So if you're not as comfortable in front of the camera, you get involved behind the camera and be equally involved. It's so welcoming, both in the committee and outside of the committee. Because it can be quite intimidating, but it's, it's so worthwhile. Because everyone there is willing to teach you what you need to know. I recommend Forge TV to anybody who wants a bit of fun, wants to challenge themselves, wants to be creative. It's a brilliant place to be involved in. There's so many different opportunities, whether it's sport, elections, or any of our many other smaller projects. There's so much to get involved in, and we really do need as many hands on deck as we possibly can get. You don't have to have any experience or any skills, as long as you're passionate about TV. Just do it, <laughs> simple as that, just do it. What do you want me to say? Varsity is a competition between the two Sheffield unis. It's one of the biggest intercity sporting events in Europe. The first tournament was in 1997. This year, after a brief break from COVID, we're on the 26th year of Varsity. Currently, the win to loss ratio is Unioff has won 13 Varsities, Hallam have won 10, and we've drawn two. Unioff have won for the last nine Varsities in a row. It's been tough for us these past few years, so it'll be very big if Hallam win Varsity this year. Varsity is a great opportunity for people to support not just the universities as a whole in the sports, but also the individuals that participate. You know, there's a lot of uh, preparation and hard work that goes into all sports. We have over 2,000 athletes competing, 80 events across 30 different sports and over 15,000 spectators. This year, Varsity looks a little bit different. We're shaking it up a bit and the opening event is going to be on the 20th of March and it's going to be the ice hockey event. And then we're closing it here for the men's ones basketball at the new Sharks Arena. What is the Varsity Oath? The Varsity Oath is something that's adopted by everyone, whether you're playing, supporting, and it's built on four words. Pride, sportsmanship, fair play and respect. Respect is a massive, massive part of boxing and obviously Varsity as a result. At the end of each bout, people always shake hands or give each other a hug. Fair play is important because you know, if you're not playing by the rules, people can get hurt. Sportsmanship means being respectful to the other team and having good morals when playing. Varsity Oath is pride. The significance of varsity is major, whether that's playing or supporting, it is more than just competing. Come on, Hallam. Go uni off. After what has been a really exciting two periods, I'm going to hand you over for the final time to our commentators, Dennis and Ollie. Cheers Amelia, and indeed it will be the third and final period of this game, as we aren't going to have overtime and possibly penalties this year, of course. It might not be that we need it anyway, but as it will be beyond the cut-off time to have that extra period, here at the Sheffield Arena. It could finish in a tie, 
Either way, whatever happens after the final 20 minutes, that will be that. Um, and we won't have the dramatic action of the penalty shootout as we did in 2023. Dennis, um, what a 20 minutes we could have uh, in store here. What are Hallam going to do in this half, in this period? Well, I, I just think that from a Hallam perspective, they need to continue their really well done high checking game and keep Uni out. That will be the only job that they have and I'm sure that they'll do a very good job of it for Uni. You've got to get a bit of that puck luck. You've got to get shots on net and, and, and just absolutely go for it. You yeah. have nothing to lose. And here we are. The puck has dropped in Hallam early on, having possession of the puck in the Uni off zone. Maybe trying to actually take it to Uni again and make this a really memorable scoreline for Lowe's in Maroon today. Made off, shot on goal, good save, Stephen turns. Stephen That's does well there. Nice flash of the leather there, and that is an early save for him. Again, obviously this game has been all about the goals. He's let a few pass him today, but that, again, is a good start to his third period. Let's see what the face-off brings. Yeah, it looks very comfortable from the 28-year-old there. Um, and here we go, another face-off. What do you think that Uni can do to bring that atmosphere? Well, I think it might be worth trying to... Uh, up the ante in terms of the physicality maybe they just sort of faltered after they'd had a couple of goals they maybe felt that they were in it more than they were uh, maybe to fire them up get the uh, the big uni off crowd back in it just try and make some big hits maybe even more than that shot by Park in there saved by Nick Winters well that's one a piece for the goal so far Scrappy play on neutral ice. Uniov do come away with it well, but uh, Hallam just poke it away. And some back checking here for Uni to do. Yeah, Joel Bark just sweeping up there. Back to Joffrey uh, Hargreaves. And now laid off to Sam Parkin, who's going to have another drive. He's done it low. Oh, that already. should be a tripping call there. It hasn't been given. Luke Reed, a very, very lucky boy there. That could have easily been. A Sheffield Uni power play. And that was just being said to the officials by those in black and gold there. Um, it could, well, I mean, would it have been as big an opportunity as it could be? Uni haven't been very good on the uh, power play, but on the penalty kill, you know, also Hallam have done very well. And forward they come now. Nathan Bennett, wow, what a run. Back across the boards. Score of the first goal, Luke Reed with it now. Back to Reed, but a poor pass and taken by Uni. Out to Nathan Bennett in neutral ice. Looks like they don't really know what they have to do with the puck sometimes when they've got it in their own zone, Uni off. Yeah, they have, they have struggled and, and that has led to goals. That will be, if it stays the current result, if Hallam win this, the story of the day will be poor defending. Brilliant turnover for Uni Sam Parkin, here. save Nick Winters. A good save from Nick Winters as well. Um, to deny the first goal of the third period going Uniov's way and maybe a chance for Hallam themselves Ooh. here. But that's good from Steven Turner. He has managed to keep it and he has. Well, it's, it's been a game of goalkeepers and we talk about Steven Turner's mistake, but how good has Nick Winters been today? Oh, he's an excellent player. I think um, the past couple of years we've known just how yeah. good Nick Winters is every time he steps out onto the ice. I mean, he's had seven games for the Bears this season, uh, 240 shots across the... 21 goals against, that is, of course, a 0 0.92 save percentage. That's high for a goalie and really, really good for this level. And it's showing today. It's also quality. doing all of that on top of playing for some very, very good sides across the NIHL divisions and even stepping in uh, here for a game uh, for the Sheffield Steelers, being named on the bench. Didn't make it onto the ice, but maybe one day he will manage to do it. He's only 23 years old. Maybe he comes forward, time. open, Brooke Smith, goal! He was wide open, and Brooke Smith starts the comeback there. The 21-year-old, the assistant coach, he's gone top shelf, and it's a wonderful strike. So much space there. Are they overcommitting, maybe? Well, it's that, it's that same story. Again, an early goal. You saw it in the second half. Can they sustain the pressure? Can they avoid defensive mistakes? Hallam maybe slightly unlucky, maybe overcommitted, 
but it was a well taken goal and he should be proud of it. A little wag of the finger there, Brooke Smith loved that one, he really really loved that one and he knows all about varsity, he coached the twos last year and of course we did say about his goal disallowed last year, now he's got his goal here in 2024 and it's seven goals to five in Helm's favour. Yet again we're asking ourselves can the uni of Sheffield get back into this game? Ishbel Wright doing a really, really good job of chasing that puck down in Hallam territory. But it is broken away now for James Wright along the boards. Oh, he's still got it in Gretzky's office. What's he going to do? Back out to the point. Is there a shot on here? Could have gone anywhere from Fusuku Atana and uh, yeah, good. he got lucky there. Good housekeeping from Glasby. Still forward, Hallam come. And just wide, James White in the corner for Hallam. No real conviction in the effort there. In no front of the net and away. Looks a bit, um, it's died down a bit for uni. Where's this, uh, their defensive tenacity just isn't there. Well, they should be tired by now, I would say. Um, being so short benched, but not just being short benched, having so few players compared to the other side. Um, they're having to match the energy of the game, which Hallam can certainly do. They've got four full lines on that bench. Um, and, and, and Uni as well, they've got an older average age of team. Obviously, we talk about Michael Shalossi being 53, and we do have an older team. Uni, it's 24 years of age, and the Hallam is much, much younger with an average age of 22. But for how the more experience and the big occasions, you would probably say. This is very true, this is very true. They're, they've a lot of huge games under their belt and it's always a good contest when that experience comes to show and it has done today. I'm not sure why Joffrey Hargreaves was uh, attempting that pass there. But he's managed to uh, come away with it pretty well, you knew off. Chip oh, down the middle, but Swept up by Nathan Bennett there, and he's going to attack, neutralise, pass out wide. Bennett looking to add to his 13 assists this season for the Sutton Sting. Big cheer for Chloe Carter there. Deep. Just a hopeful pass again. And this is it, there isn't much of a game plan um, when they're on the attack uh, with Puck. What do you think they should be doing differently? I think they need support. When someone's going forward, they never really seem to have support. Um, Ooh, when Brooke goal. Smith was there, he scored a goal. But they haven't really been doing it enough today, and, and really that's what Hallam have been doing really well. They, they go forward in numbers. Um, Uni maybe not having the energy to do that. Stevenson, a good catch there. Very comfortable. Does what he has to do as a goalkeeper. It may not sound like it, but the intensity's dropped in this arena. How can we bring it back up? This game, I feel, for the fans maybe, has died down a little bit. It's a little bit less loud, certainly in my ears. I don't know whether you're hearing that at home as well. What can both teams do to really get the crowd on their side? Well, I think for Hallam, this probably works. They, they don't want to let anything change what they're doing. Their game is good. They know they're the better behind side. the goal. Oh, what's happened? Oh, yeah, I think Steventon smothered it. A few afters there. Yeah, a few little words with Otley. They're shaking hands there. They're on the same team. And it is Michael Shalossi, of course. Shalossi the doesn't look happy. No. He's still just as engaged in this game as he was when he first made an appearance in this fixture 18 years ago. How important is that passion for uni right now? It has to be. It has to be. Well... I think it, it always has to be because generally Hallam have the better side. Um, there's no real getting away from that. Of course, um, they have been superb today. And ultimately, I think that's really what got Uni through 2023 and this year. Um, I think it's probably what's got them so close um, to Hallam this year. Um, but still, obviously, you're going to have the uh, quality come into the fore. We've probably seen that towards the end of the, uh, the periods. Sam Parkin, nice little touchdown. He drives, can't quite get it past, but he does find Glasby. Oh, a cross net, but nothing doing. Sam Parkin again with it, into the middle, misses everybody. Back across goal. Michael Shalossi couldn't quite get it back to Sam Parkin. But he's with the puck again. 
looking to dump it on net again from a tough position. But ultimately, it might be that that's what they need to do. They're not really having the energy to create opportunities themselves, just having to hope that they're going to get a few lucky bounces. Uh, some of the lucky bounces that Hallam have maybe had, making the most of... Uh, of Steventon not getting down quickly enough. Absolutely, Ollie, and it, it, it is a cliche, but if you don't buy a ticket, you can't win that raffle. And, and Hallam have, Hallam have pulled off a couple of lotteries, you would say. Yeah, maybe well, it's a cliche for a reason. It's true. Um, they, uh, Hallam through neutral ice. James White on the side. Here come Hallam. Opportunity here. Shot on goal. Oh, just wide. Suki Batana with that shot. Ryan Fraley now with the puck in the corner. Oh, and it's given away to Brooke Smith. He's yeah, driving. Oh, down a bit of a cul-de-sac though. Suki Batana doing really well in the corner. Good check there as well. Nice and strong. Just again, didn't really have the support. By the time they'd arrived, so had Hallam. Cheers of Hallam, Hallam ringing round the arena and you can tell why they've done so well. And a response from the uh, bigger uni contingent. This really is a special event and, uh, and again we've said it before but it's, it's such an honour to be able to commentate on a, on a game this special and to be here. Um, but I hope you guys are also enjoying it at home wherever you are. Sam parking forward. You're absolutely right, Ollie, and, and everybody involved, everybody on our team, every spectator, every player, every coach should be so, so proud that they are part of such a spectacular occasion. And the, the, what I've liked more than any, anything here, yes, there's been a few chirps, but the, the, the sportsmanship between everybody has been really good natured, and I've enjoyed that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, uh, you're always going to see it. There is a lot of respect for the two sides. Obviously, there's a rivalry that runs deep, the Steel City derby. Um, but ultimately, these guys are friends and they know how good each other are. And with such quality as well. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's the best uh, university game in the country, I think, by a mile. You know, Sheffield Bears, the uh, national champions of the top division last year, beating Oxford University 1-0 in that final. They only conceded two all tournament. Here's Lawson Glasby. Oh, spilled. Not quite in and really well recovered, good. well recovered by Nick Winters. Excellent from Nick Winters. To make that second save is not easy at all. Even to see the puck um, in that position would have been tough, but he's done excellently. You, you, you may think that for some goalkeepers they slide about, but they have to be the best skaters on the pitch. And this is exactly why, to go down and get back up and leather that glove, really grab hold of it and make sure there's no scraps. That's why they have to be so good with their feet. You've got to be so confident. and You've got to have the, uh, the confidence to say, I'm good enough to make this save. I'm good enough to catch this. It's not good enough to just throw a paw at it and, and let it go straight to good the Good uh, face-off win by Hallam there. First goal scorer, Luke Reed. First goal of the game, of course. He's got the puck now. Shot on goal, saved by Steventon again. Better, you would say. Ollie. Yeah, freezes it well. I, th I think he really has come into it. Um, it's always tough when you're uh, seeing so many shots coming towards you as a as a netminder. Um, but he, you know, he's, he's certainly brought some composure in this third period. He's done very well there. Doesn't let that go anywhere near any of the Hallam players. And it was it was not a clear sight for him. It's a good no, save there through all. bodies. He's done well. Joffrey Hargreaves with the puck behind the net now. Stretch pass, can't quite find Ishbel right, and it's going to go for Ice. Yeah, another break in play as we head towards halfway through this final period. The difference between the sides remains two goals. Hallam on seven and the University of Sheffield on five. Twelve goals in this game, and it's been a pleasure to bring them all to you live. One, on more, TV. one more goal and it will be the most highly scored ice hockey varsity ever. Yes. So you are you are potentially witnessing history if well, one of these teams can find the net one more the, time. The uh, biggest ever win for Hallam, I believe, was 10-2 um, around 2006, 2007. And it certainly hasn't been anything like that today. It's been two fantastic sides putting their all into it. 
And here may be an opportunity. Radu Nikolai on the far side. Brooke Smith with the puck currently behind net. Back to Brooke Smith and into the corner. Well defended by Hallam. Yeah, really good from Nathan Otley there. He was composed. Oh, and he it's coming he through. Here come Hallam. But not quite. Not quite for Neil Orr going forward. Joffrey Hargreaves trying to clear up, but he can't. Who's at the back post Four for Hallam? One now. Oh, that's superb, but they can't quite get it in the net. And here come Uni. Sam Parkins open back post. What's going to happen? That looks like a save by Nick Winters. Nick well Winters smothered. Does the job again. That's a real missed opportunity for Uni of Sheffield. But you have to praise Nick Winters again, getting down low. It you may do. look like an easy save. It's not. He's, it's a small hole that he's trying to cover. He gives Faulkner nothing. Faulkner has to pass it to Park in there. But, uh, you know, there was no opportunity to shoot. Absolutely. Winters yeah. did exactly what he had to do. Absolutely. He, Parkin was wide open. He scored already this game. I know Brooke Smith has also had a go, but really should be crossing. Wrap around. What's happening? Nothing in front of goal. Hallam clear. Stretch pass, not quite finding James White, but he is going to chase oh, look it. At the hustle here. Really well done. Glasby chasing him in the corner. James White back out for Hallam. Can he find the shot on the point? Yes, well done. Uni. They are straight through. Parking again. Oh, just wide. Good save, Nick Still Winters. There. Parkin very much right-handed there. If he was left-handed, maybe that's an opportunity again. James White taking a tumble in the corner, but straight back up and chasing after it. Ryan Fraley doing what he does, running Excellent. straight through the middle. And that is good defending by the 53-year-old Michael Shalossi. Wow, what is going on at the moment? Shalossi has it again in neutral ice, and he'll leave that for Lawson Glasby to chase, and he does. This is exactly how you'd hope the final few moments of uh, any Sheffield Shot on goal. Oh, just wide. Chance of uni, uni, uni. Precious building here. Back in the game, the crowd, it seems. There was a lull earlier in the period. Danny Haid, the German, taking it out, doing really well, but he's lost out. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, not quite. Not quite to be for Radu Nikolai. Radu again, trying to find that pass. Blocked really well by Luke Reed. Kept tight against those boards. Eventually, the... Uh Zone is cleared. Joel Bark with it behind the net. Stretch pass, finds Chloe Carter. William Schlossi can't quite get it into the defensive zone of Hallam. And Luke Reed once again on the wide. He's had a good shift so far. Long one. Ooh. Tight there again, Stevenson. Maybe the back puck bounced up just a little bit off his stick, but he covers well, and that is going to be another face-off. Last seven minutes. What are we going to see, Ollie? Well, I think we'll see more of what we've seen over the past couple of minutes. There's just going to be chances. Um, you would hope, as a neutral, chances for both sides, forward, back. You know, these guys are going to be tired by now, but they're you know model athletes, and they'll know how to close the final seven and a half minutes of action here. For Sheffield Varsity, Out wide, Nathan Bennett, shot on goal, well diverted by Stevenson. You're absolutely right, they are all superb athletes and they've done so well and provided such a great game for us here. Last seven minutes, let's see what it brings. Do not go anywhere. Here come Hallam, can't get it across them. Oh, where's the puck? Stevenson saved it just down against his right leg pad. Doing He's exactly what he has to do got on top of it with his blocker there. That's going to be another face-off in the Sheffield Uni zone. Yeah, you just watch that there. He knows where it is. We've seen it go in from that sort of angle already in this game, but he doesn't leave any scraps for Hallam to feed off. Joel Marsh in the corner trying to feed it in front of goal. Can't quite find Nathan Otley. Great defending in the crease there. Brooke Smith, he's had been on the pitch so much already. And here's Ishbel Wright with the puck right now. Michael Schlossi just feeding that into the corner. Here come Hallam. 
Pass one, pass two. Trying to knock him off balance there. Can he get so the shot well. away? Oh, not quite what he wanted. And Uni again. got back really well there. Yeah, very well. And again, Joel Marsh couldn't quite find the finish the second time around. Now here's the captain, Thomas Dermott. Stretch pass all the way out to Adam Broughton. Two on one and they've done well. Lawson Glasby, star defender for... Excellent control of the park. Star defender for Union. Captain of the entire Sheffield Bears, of course. Doing really well. He's been on the pitch for a very long time as well. Sam Parkin driving forward, shot on goal. Goal! Uni! Listen what? to the roar! Five minutes to go and it's a one-goal game, Oli! Well, this is quite the final five minutes of action we're going to see here. Seven goals to six and what a strike that is. Lovely wrist shot into the top right corner. Sam Nothing Parkin. Nick Winters can do about that. He He's loves this place. Superb. Wow! Sam Parkin must absolutely love this place. Yet another goal for the uni of number 92. 13 goals today. Unlucky for some. Maybe it'll be unlucky for the uni of... Sheffield. We mentioned it earlier, this is a historically high scoring game now. Look you are that. watching history. And Sam Parkin, well, he did it last year to take it to overtime. Obviously, there won't be overtime this year, but can he find that equaliser for uni? This is an exciting game. Is that a Sam Parkin hat trick? Oh, and now it's now wrapped here up. Here comes Will Shalassi. Oh, not quite. Taken well into the corner by Hallam. The Super. officials have gone down. Behind the goal, Gretzky's office. What's going to happen? Hallam play it out. James White can't get control of the puck. And Uni are going to take that back into the world. I hope you that. can feel this, uh, this atmosphere coming from your screens at home because we can certainly feel it here. A university event, having this kind of atmosphere is unbelievable. I've got those goosebumps, Ollie. It is really quite something. And this promises to be an immense last five minutes. Now for Hallam, what can they do? Can they silence the cheers of Uni? Nathan Bennett in the corner, blocked well by the two Uni players. Nikola, uh, Radu Nikolai getting that out. Joffrey Hargreaves trying to stay with the puck. Nice layoff there. Swarming in Hallam, really nice stick work. Nathan Bennett, is he going to get a shot on goal? Not quite, he's come out into neutralised. Oh, and that's a great block by Chloe Carter. That is superb, could have saved the goal there for Uni. Now could have here saved the come game. Hallam again, all the way through, wrap around. Not quite for Danny Haid, the German. Physical action, they know that they can do something here, either side. And here come Uni, Sam Parkin, that man again. Looking for his hat trick. What can he do? Towards goal. Not quite. Nick Winter's very, very composed there. It's exactly what you need at a moment like this. Don't have anything to give the opposition. Well, a chance Ollie, on the face off. Last three minutes, last four minutes even. Three minutes, 53 seconds. Ooh, what do you yes. think is going to happen? Well, it's impossible to say because every time we've made a prediction tonight, us and the pundits, I mean, it's just completely gone out the window. Michael Shalossi with the shot. Good, not charge quite down. there. Blocked. Space here for Hallam. Luke Reed, again, the number one goal scorer in this game. That feels like an age ago now. Oh, it certainly been, does. It's been 12 since. What a superb game. Lawson Glasby, that captain again for you, not quite making it past the defence and neutral ice. Here come Hallam, but that's going to go all the way through. Oh, that's a good stretch pass. Ronnie Nikolai's got it now. Can he drive? He scored the winner last year. Good save. Oh, Nick where's Winters. the puck gone? Not quite sure from Nick Winters, but oh no, here come Hallam. Uni have maybe fumbled it. That's a good shot and that's a good save. Excellent save. Well, that could have been the game right there. Hallam did so well getting that puck away quickly. Great control and a good shot. Again, Luke Reed, he's been everywhere this third period. But it's another good save in Callum Stevenson. And he's been very, very good 
in this third period. Yeah, it's really nice to see that he's uh, really coming to his own. Nicolo versus Hayde on the, full, on the uh, face off. It's a Hallam victory there. Just less than three minutes to go. Across goal. Oh, James Ooh. White, that's a miss. That was the game at the back door. Could have done so much better. Really good positioning, but not quite the finish. Radio Nikolai driving forward again, the game winner for Varsity last year. What can he do? That's well, very well defended by Hallam. That's just what they needed. And they've got three on two. You need oh. have to commit. Oh, a mix up between James White. They could have this game it's done and dusted by now. James White and Thomas Dermott, the captain, not quite communicating with each other. Could have got a shot off there. James White again with it. Can they get it in front of the net for that vital, vital shot and that vital, vital goal? Ryan Fraley all the way again as he has done. Oh, and off the post. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Uni can thank their lucky stars there. We've seen just about everything here at the Sheffield Arena tonight. How incredible has Ryan Fraley been this game? Oh, he's been absolutely fantastic. It's been all him um, so often, especially in that, that first and second period. Every time it seemed that Hallam had a good opportunity, it was him. And still, just unbelievable player. Danny Hay trying to cause trouble behind the uni goal, but that's a lovely bit of skill from Will Solossi. Now, here we go. Faulkner not quite finding the pass, but he's still chasing it. Final 90 seconds here. For Suki Gutana, trying to play puck forward, can't quite get it. Long shot, well gloved by Nick Winters. Certainly was a long shot. No stoppage though, we're going forward. Sam Parkin, cross goal maybe? Oh no! Oh, Uni should have scored there. That was a very, very good chance. Not quite finding Fantastic the right ball. part of the stick. Well, minute and a half. Can Hallam see this out? At this point, absolutely no idea. I don't think anyone in here knows how this game is going to end. But either way, we've had a pretty good time. One last minute. Let's enjoy it. What a game from everybody. Radu Nikolai. 40 seconds. We've got an icing call there. Ooh, it gives ooh, an opportunity ooh. for Uni of with 35 seconds to go. Stranger things have happened at this arena. What's your play here? Are we getting a, are we getting a shot straight on goal? Or are we going to try and use those 30 seconds to the best of our ability? Well, I think they've got to open it up because Hallam can just close the game out by holding the, the puck against the boards at this point. I think they've got to go for it as we have a timeout here in case you're wondering what's going on. Michael Shalossi giving some final words to his team, but of course it also gives Hallam the opportunity to talk themselves. They're making a good, good decision here. They're trying to make a play, trying to get that vital shot on goal. And can they find that goal? Hallam, they'll hope Nick Winters is there again for them to protect and they're and not just Nick Winters their defense has been superb today haven't they Ollie? well despite conceding six goals that has been off some immense <laughs> pressure from the University of Sheffield it seems crazy to be saying that in a game with 13 goals the but defenses was, have been strong yeah, but, but they, they have, have been <laughs> the uh, the attacks have been excellent and uh, Shalossi actually probably just misses out there and they uh, clear the zone Hallam not much time to go here Uni have to make everything count. Everybody is on their feet. Last 20 seconds. In front of goal. Not quite. 15 to go. In front. Not quite. Where's it gone now? Hallam are clear. And that is what they will want. That will likely see out the game. Unless Uni can provide an absolute miracle. They are indeed. Get it forward. Net here, Three, Uni. two, one. And Hallam have won it. What a game. Superb, and they flood Nick Winters. He has been immense for Hallam today. Oh, they flood him for good reason. They, they have well, they have really deserved that win. They really have. Yeah, I mean, either side winning the game would have been deserved, I think. Both of them were absolutely excellent. Um, and we've had an excellent night here at the Sheffield Arena, but of course, that's us done. That's the final 20 yes. minutes of the game. Thank you very, very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. We are passing back now to Seb Howe and Roy Jones. Wow, thank you very much, Ollie Mitchell and Dennis Minter, your company team.
at the ice hockey this evening. Lloyd, what a spectacle in the end. University of Sheffield pushing right until the end, but it's Hallam victorious this evening at the arena. What are your overall thoughts? What again? I mean, last year was good. That was great. I mean, a, a huge congratulations to both teams putting on such a spectacle for us all. We're all so grateful. Yeah, I mean, what a match. Uh, what a, 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 Oh, I can't even speak. It's lost for words. It's lost for words. It's lost for words. A 13 goal thriller. Um, both teams, especially Union, walking away with that head held so hard. Absolutely so. So he did finish 7 6 to Hallam. Uh, so they have the one point advantage in the after the first fixture of Sheffield Varsity 2024. Who exactly was your standout from the Hallam side, Lloyd? From the Hallam side, I think. We, we've mentioned them already. Fraley was brilliant. Uh, the netminder, Nick Winters, so many players to uh, choose from. Uh, even even in that first period, Marsh, incredible. Got himself on the score sheet. I think for me, Fraley maybe. How about you, Sam? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you in, in Fraley and, and the number nine. I spoke about this after the uh, the first period. I think he absolutely impressed and just continued that, that form uh, throughout the match. Um, and I think actually we can uh, cross over now to Amelia Pitchside. No, not just yet, but we will very shortly be able to speak to Amelia Pritchard who will be speaking to a representative from both sides but yeah uh, I think that would definitely the stand up play yeah, for Hallam sure. what about University of Sheffield I'm I'll have to bring it up yeah. right at the start we, Lloyd we, mentioned we, Sam Parkin <laughs> his stand up performance last season uh, last year in fact and he's proving you right and uh, yeah same again tonight absolutely not to sound like a broken record but he was phenomenal tonight he may have been on the losing side but i still believe he was probably overall the man of the match for myself at least he was unbelievable four goals uh, he, the, the attacking threat he, he provided for union he caused so much problem for the hallam hallam defense i think he can especially go home so proud of what he's contributed to today's game absolutely and uh, just for those still bearing with us we will be speaking to a representative from both Hallam University and the University of Sheffield. Just mean, meanwhile, while we do get to that point, we are just seeing the uh, the players from both seeds going through sort of the, the post-match handshakes, a sign of respect uh, that they have for each other. Obviously, normally teammates at the uh, the Sheffield Bears. Um, do you think Hallam were overall deserved winners, Lloyd? I mean, they, they played well. I think they they were the better side in both the first two periods. In that third period, it was it was comfortably Uniovs. Of course, you know, the nature of the game, they had so much to play for. We mentioned it. They're going to have to go out there all guns blazing. And especially once they got those two goals, momentum really shifted in their favour. I think they did really well. For me, I think, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be fair to say they didn't deserve it. However, I think if you look back on the goals, Uniov had to play so much better for theirs. And, you know, I, I think a draw would have been fair. I think uh, a Uniov, I think any result, both teams had the bright parts. Uh, both teams struggles in areas. I think Allen deserved it. And the 7-6 does that perhaps flatter uh, the University of Sheffield? Do you think they deserved the six point six goals in fact? Not at all. Like I just said, they were they were so strong going forward. They had more than six chances. You know, we, we talked about Hallam every time they went forward, they looked like they were gonna score. Uniov really put pressure on. Um, I, th I, th I think it's a fair score and if anything, you know, it it it's flattering for Hallam. I think Union have had more chances, they did look better, especially in that third period. But, you know, just that raw talent that we mentioned of Hallam's at the start really proved the to be the difference maker. And, and what do you make to Hallam's approach, perhaps, in, in that final third? You know, we, we saw them come out all guns blazing in, in the first and second period. You mentioned a little bit earlier that, that Union seemed to have that advantage in, the, in that last period. Uh, period and um, what did you make to sort of Hallam's approach a little bit more they had to do a lot more defending but what do you make to that altogether absolutely it was always going to happen they were going to be on the back foot in that third period Uniov were always going to have to go out to win that game um, they needed three goals they did really well to get two and you know that last five minutes it was cagey there was chances at the end I think Uniov did so so well in that third period they blew Hallam away Hallam didn't get a sniff they had a few chances here and there nothing compared to Uniov and to me I, I think they were always going to struggle in the last period I think if they got a goal early on it would have probably lifted their heads the game would have been out of Uni at Uniov's hands you know I think that second period would have probably really put pressure on Hallam as well they knew they were nearly capable of, of dropping a three goal lead so I think once that first goal went in pressure's on to not concede another and then once that went in all heads are gone they did really well if anything to sort of keep their heads stayed on they stayed strong at the back didn't give away too many too many chances after Uniov scored 
but yeah, I, I, I think I think they should be happy. Because it was almost attack versus defense in, uh, in yeah. that last third. Yeah, no, it, it was mainly played in you know the the offensive uh, zone for Uni of. And again, like I just said, naturally. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it, I, I think I think Uni of really nailed it with the approach of that third period. Just just throwing everything from whatever at the wall that stuck. It worked for them. If they could have had that much intensity in the first two periods, you know. They could have been runaway winners. They weren't. Hallam, you know, best team overall for three periods. Because Hallam, Hallam, prior to last year, Hallam were actually dominant in the mm. ice hockey. I think this is now their, their 18th win from, from 19 played whilst the ice hockey has uh, been part of Sheffield Varsity. Um, before we uh, sort of uh, allude to that a little bit more further, we will pass it down to Amelia, who is pitch side with uh, a player. Yeah, they are just taking photos, so we will get across to Amelia very shortly. Uh, you can probably see that sort of the, the official team photos uh, currently uh, taken by uh, uh, of the University of Sheffield. Sheffield Hallam uh, are just sort of making their way around, serenading uh, the, the pitch, and we can now cross over to Amelia live. Commiserations, obviously, you didn't win the match, but it was a great game. Uh, yeah, we left everything on the ice, which I finally got that saying right. So, um, yeah, it feels great to get a hatchet, but it would have been so much nicer if we win. So, but it is what it is. We'll come back next year and stronger. How did it feel to have got so many goals under your belt? I mean, it looked like such an enjoyable game. Uh, it was, yeah. Uh, obviously, it was end to end. I mean, hopefully we gave a good show to the supporters. But, um, you know, I'm just a uh, shame we couldn't get a win in the end. So. Any final words for your teammates going into the rest of our team? Uh, go and bring that trophy on. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Thanks for your time. Yeah, so, so thank you to, to Amelia for that one. She was just speaking to Sam Parkin, probably the standout player from the University of Sheffield. What do you make to his performance altogether? It was unbelievable. You know, we, we, we've absolutely, you know, we spoke about it already. I think enough has been said. Obviously, he'll be really disappointed after such a standout performance that he couldn't win the game, a second varsity in a row. How do you think the Union players are going to be feeling right now? Well, I think they'll be particularly good, considering that, that they did try to come back in that final period with, with a bit of a comeback approach. but. I don't think they were too depleted. In the end, sort of, uh, the result probably shows the fight and the performance that, that they did manage to, to bring at the arena this evening. But they'll be slightly upset. Maybe, maybe now that people might be seeing last year's a little bit of a one-off. You know, Hallam reasserting their, their dominance uh, this evening. But yeah, they'll they're not be too depleted. It's all to play for, really. You know, it's only one of several uh, competition uh, matches between the two universities uh, in Sheffield Varsity. So they'll be upset. But equally, you just need to head up and go again in the different sports, in, in the variety of, of events that we do have at, at Varsity. So, although the loss at the ice hockey, I think everyone's had a, had a great day out. And, and it was pretty close call in the end as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 of course. I think those Union players can be so immensely proud that not only have they made it such a tight game when it was running away from them at the time, but also they've turned two years in a row, they've turned an event which was basically, you know, a foregone conclusion, a Hallam win, a Hallam guaranteed point. And, you know, they flipped on its head. There was points at today's game. Well, I thought Union Uni might win, Absolutely. especially last year. Yeah. And also, I know, I know, you know, they didn't win this year, they, but they won last year. I thought this year they had a strong performance. They showed a lot of fight. They didn't come away with a win. But, you know, against such a such a strong Holland team, they can they can go home very proud. Yeah, certainly can. They can they can go home with their, their head tails high. You know, they probably they probably started a little bit slower than, than what they would have liked ordinarily. But when they got used to the sort of the tempo of the game and, and the feel of of the match, um, I think they did go into it uh, particularly in, in that final period. So yeah, absolutely, they can they can go home with with their head tails high and. You know, there's loads of events to play for. Ice hockey is just one event, um, and we've got plenty more coming up, especially on on Forge TV, it, and, and including before and after Easter as well. Um, so yeah, they're not too disheartened. As for Hallam, sort of reaffirming their their dominance, 
Um, and we can chat to uh, a Hallam player now with Amelia, who's uh, courtside. Well, that was... Holly, how does it feel to bring back the win after last year? It feels unbelievable. I didn't play last year, but um, I was so disappointed for them and being on the bench this year. Everyone put the heart into it, and yeah, it was great. So is this year your first year playing varsity? Yeah, this is my first year. What was that like? Um, I was nervous. It was really nerve-wracking, but everyone on the bench was really supportive. I think I've been the first woman to play in quite a couple of years, so that was really nice, and yeah, it was great. Any standout moments for you? Um, I just think it's unbelievable how hard uni have work, even though they're very short bench, and I think that's what made the game really good tonight. Yeah. And any final words to your teammates, having just won the ice hockey? Well done, everyone. You all worked your hearts out, and you should be proud. Yeah. Thank you, Holly. Well, that concludes all of the ice hockey coverage for this year's Sheffield Varsity Ice Hockey Competition. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the 15th of April for the boxing. Have a good night.